Uh, That's the first thing he did. So, family, we get ready to transition into destroying Christian Dogma Part Fifteen. But I was listening to um, Daniel this week as one of my meditation, and I want to uh, recite his prayer to give honor to the Great I Am. So, give me a minute. Let me go find this. And I'm going to offer up most high some praise, some glory, because people are, are getting fallen into man worship, and we're never going to worship any man. We're going to give honor to the most high. Uh, after y'all, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, the water, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, just to uh, touch on something, um, if many people don't know, because um, the last thing that you was talking about before playing uh, the last song was about uh, uh, curriculum and, 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 and graduating and, and having a certain kind of high level education, right? And wearing a cap and gown. But a lot of people don't know that that cap symbolizes something too. Um, you know, when you, when you take that tassel, that tassel that's at the top and you take it from one side to the next and you throw it up in the air, that symbolizes something. And uh, we know that we have Hebrewisms, but there is a such thing as heathen isms. There's only two isms. It's either gonna be Hebrewisms or it's gonna be heathenisms. And that cap and gown, that's part of the heathen isms that contradicts or goes completely against the Hebrewisms or God's law. So when you, when you learn that curriculum and you take that tassel and you, when you look at the tassel, you're like, oh, that looks like our fringes or the keeping of the law. You're going from, you learn something on one side and then you, when you take it over to the other side, now you've graduated or you're coming under their law now. You're not under the law of God. You come into another understanding that they deem as higher. So you gotta catch that heathenisms in in that cap and gown. I'd like you to add a little weight um, to what you're saying. You know, it's, it's four corners on, on that little hat and you're moving it from the side. It represents your degree. Well, Shriners, which is the upper echelon of that whole community, but you have masons, um, they were a certain type of uh, and, and it's all based on this uh, Masonic um, Babylonian trash. Mm -hmm. But the Shriners were a certain one. So they're supposed to have all knowledge. Most of us cannot join a Shriners. Come. They don't have too many darkies. I'll say darkies. Right. Facts. They, you just can't be a part of their community. If you happen to make it across, like they don't be doing something. Right. Talk about pledge, right? I'm gonna just stop. Pretty much. So, family, we're getting ready to transition, and it's already late in the hour. I don't know if Most High just had us on that Shabash I bar, but his will be done. We're gonna try to get through part 15, so you guys can uh, meditate on that while I'm going. But I just I was convicted this week, and I, I hope I'm not presenting any. I hope I'm not presenting anything to y'all that y'all think is coming from me. Because this is not man. This is not, I'm not smart. I'm not no scholar. I'm not no intellectual. I want the truth. I grew up in the church. I'm tired of being lied to. So I, I, I was listening to Daniel and I think, uh, can we go to Daniel chapter two? And we're going to give praise to the, to the most high. We're going to give praise to the most high. Daniel chapter two, and we're going to read, um, start at verse 20. Daniel 2 and 20. Shema. Shema. Daniel chapter 2, verse 20. Read. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of Allah forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. 
He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is darkness and the light dwelleth with them. Mm -hmm. I thank thee and praise thee, O oh, O oh thou Allahim of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee, for thou has now made known unto us the king's matter. The most Daniel is giving praise to the great I am for giving him the understanding and wisdom. And he's speaking to you and I saying, listen, wisdom belongs to the father. So if you ever getting puffed up in your pride, think you know something, repent because it's of Satan. This is not of man's intellect. The most high can blind you where you can't see anything. So I want to give praise to the great I am by Sham Yahweh Shai. This is not us getting this understanding. This is the most high seeing our hearts. And he's removing the scales from our eyes to destroy this false doctrine of Christianity. So all praise to the great I am. We're going to go into destroying Christian dogma part 15. The daughter of Sarah over there. Daughter of Sarah by the skin. So I hope now through these first 14 parts, y'all can see how the most high laid it on my, my spirit, my rewap, that we've been reading Frankenstein works that these people call a Bible. And these people have um, just elevated the Bible to be some great holy work. And when the most high starts opening your eyes, you're like, this Bible is not holy at all. This Bible is not holy at all. And I, me and my wife was talking, and I'm going to try to repeat this as I said it to her, because she said, you need to say that like that to the family. So Abba be with me. Um, this Bible, this Bible is not going to get us back home. This, this collection of writings called the Bible is not going to get us back to Zion. It's going to be the direct spirit of the Most High through the power of his son that's given us understanding, foresight, and wisdom. And that's why that, that's the whole purpose of this series. That's the whole purpose of these long, drawn-out slides, letting you know you have to fast and pray and keep your temple pure. The Father's not going to give you no revelation if you have a polluted temple. So the days that we fast and pray, take it seriously, because he can give you some wisdom that may save our life. Because it just happened in Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar was going to kill all the wise men, including Daniel and the Israelites, if they didn't reveal the dream to him. And Daniel says, hold, don't be hasty. We serve a power in the sky. He owns wisdom. And our father can give us the wisdom, even though you can't remember your dream and you want us to tell us your dream and you have no clue how it starts or nothing. And you want me to repeat your dream to you or you want to kill me. And his, his own wicked scholar, like no man on earth is able to do that. And our father, our elder says, relax, give me a minute. We're going to pray to our power, the only power, and he's going to give us wisdom. That's what I'm telling y'all, family. This Bible is not going to give you the understanding we need to avoid these plagues coming. We are holy people with a holy covenant, and we have an inheritance no one can brag about. Uh. So this is what uh, Nariah drew. We, we done sang his praises so many times, and I couldn't express this the way this brother did it. But it don't matter what kind of translation you got out there, uh, the 1611 KJV, the new KJV, the Amplified, the Cipher, it doesn't matter. It's all coming from a poison well. That's what this image is depicting. No matter what translation you're going to spend that good money on, it's coming from a poison well. 
it's coming from a poison well. So we haven't uh, rehearsed this in a while. Let's rehearse our tribal declaration. Let's uh, sound off nice and strong. Y'all ready? One, two, three. These are these are struggles. Protect not the Israelites. If you don't understand the Israelites, then you won't understand these struggles. It's just the facts of the case. We're not being we're not being mean. We're not trying to be standoffish. The text, the framework of the Bible was written by holy men, men who talked to Yah directly, and they wrote the text in the in the dialect we are learning. They didn't have no vowel system, no matrix lexiones. They didn't have no nikus and dukus and dakus, none of that. They had the picture graphs that we use and their, their language was simple. Abba, Thawada, Danga, Zakaria. Their language was simple. So if you don't know the language, if you don't know the heritage of these Israelite men, you're just reading the Bible from a Greco-Roman perspective, oh, faith. You're never gonna understand what these scrolls are saying. So the last time we was together, we shared that the KJV, the King James Bible, is built upon seven earlier works. And they took fragments of these earlier Bibles when they got to the KJV. But I left out an eighth work. There's an eighth Bible before the KJV. There's something called a Com Plutonesian polygot Bible. Com Plutonesian polygot Bible. And what this Bible is, it has what they think is Hebrew with all those vowel points. It has um, Greek and it has uh, Syriac and different columns. And this Bible is before the King James. It's in the uh, 1500s uh, before the King James. So this, this Bible also has something to do with the KJV. This is another part of the Frankenstein monster. Uh, can you read a little uh, background about this uh, Complutonesian Bible? Yes. The compl the compl the compl oh what's this word? Complu Tunisian Complu Tunisian Polygot Bible. Cardinal Eximenes spared no expense in producing the Complu Tunisian Polygot Bible. He acquired many important manuscripts specifically for the purpose aiming to secure the best manuscripts he could to provide a solid foundation for his polyglot, polyglot. He obtained manuscripts from the Vatican itself, thanking Pope Leo X for providing them. Traces of such manuscripts are indeed discernible, particularly in Greek texts, and there is still a copy at Madrid of the Venetian manuscript, which he is believed to have used. Cardinal Eximenes invited the top religious scholars of his day to assist in the project. Only Catholic scholars were used in the production of the Complutonesian Polygot Bible. No Israelites were acceptable. And I'm glad you said it like that, Ab, because this is the 1500s, early 1500s, and these um, these theologians, these theologians know that the Jews are black. Even though the Germans are now growing and coming into our faith, they look, the, the, this, this era looked at them as like, y'all are converts. So when he says no Jews were accepted to work on his work, He's talking about the rabbinic Jews who were black like you and I. They didn't want their input. Y'all can't help us with this Bible. Even though they're wicked ancestors of ours, they know the language better than you do, Catholic man. So already your work is going to be off. Read on. Even for the production, 
but no Israelites were acceptable even for the production of the Hebrew text and the Aramaic Targums. The chosen scholars met in Spain in the city of Ala Alaka. Alcala? Alcala de Hanares in Latin, Complentum. So that's where the name comes from, where they built it at. At Complutense University. Uh -huh. Hence the name Complutonesian Polygot Bible. Work on the ambitious project began in 1502. So when was King James finished, the first one? 1611. So that's what, about 100 years oh. earlier? And the New Testament was completed and printed in 1514, with the work on the Old Testament continuing until 1517. Mm -hmm. Overall, the publication of the Complutonesian Polygot Bible was delayed while the work on the Old Testament continued to allow both the Old and New Testament to be published together as a complete work in 1520. Did y'all catch that? So before this, the Old and New Testament wasn't together. You had something called the Hebrew Bible from Jesus and Malachi, and then our elders who believed in Messiah, they considered those letters epistles, epistles of the, but you didn't have a complete collection known as a Bible before this competition. No one had those writings together. If our ancestors knew you was putting those letters on par with the prophets, Nariah, what they'd do? They lay hands on you. If, if our elders yeah. knew that you was calling their letters holy, like the prophets, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, what are you doing? Right. These pagans did this. These pagans put the prophets put these letters and saying this is a holy word. No, it's not. No, it's not. We don't have. Oh, did you finish that? Come. You just said that, sorry, Shalak stood out to me and said giving thanks to the Pope for providing them. Mm -hmm. These are supposed to be holy scriptures, word from the most high. You give a praise to the Pope for all wisdom, as you said, comes from the most high. So but the Pope is the vicar of Christ. Wow. Authority. You and see, you see how sinister this is? And this is a precursor of your KJV. And this proves how we be having those theories about the Vatican having text because he said they obtained the manuscripts from the Vatican. You got some scrolls to our temples that no one ever seen. You got some records that the prophets, because like the Levites had history that wasn't holy, it's just someone was recording history. And in this small town of such and such, that's it may not be holy writ. But it's our history. Right. It was a sale. I bought this portion of land from Chef for 80 shekels, and, and I promised him the first of my litter that year. We we got these documents to so his so his his posterity know I didn't steal this from your father. The chance asking me, your father, your father sold me this land. We supposed to have a genealogy book too, right? I don't I don't know where, you know. The you know Pope, that, yeah, a lot of our stuff. You know, I meant like I don't know where I heard that from, but I just it, we suppose they always so they could tell who came from who. We had a book, especially the Levites, right? The Levites, you gotta gotta add if they come from Aaron, you know you're being added to the register. Right. That's how we kept the Le the the, the priesthood old. So this is a precursor to your KJV, and like Zamoya putting out, you're giving praise to the Pope. We don't uh, oh. uh copies of the Complutonesian Polygot Bible found their way into the principal libraries of Europe and had considerable influence on subsequent editions of the Bible. They were one of the sources used for the textual basis of the King James Bible. So y'all see why we see it's a Frankenstein Bible? You Bible thumping me, that's good scripture. Mm. Paul said, turn to the book of Romans is garbage. You think you're really reading something. It's the work of men. That's what I'm telling y'all, the most high. It is what it is. I hate talking like this, but this is our right. 
This is our inheritance. The Most High is doing his work. He's calling us back to him, and he's talking directly to us by his son, saying, son, this work is garbage. Mm. This work is garbage. So let's go to, for those who may not have the time to uh, get caught up, let's do a quick refresher on why or what motivated this study. These Englishmen who years after the KJV, they came up with this idea that the Bible is infallible, inspired, it's holy writ. So this is, uh, it's online, but this is known as the Westminster Confession of Faith. It's online in, in, in full detail. We're just gonna highlight or clip the highlights for sake of time. This is the Confession of Faith. Number two, under the name of Holy Scripture or the word of God written are now contained all the books of the Old and New Testament. If you keep continuing to hear this is the written word of God, this is the word of God, this is the word of God. This is in, this is in the 1500s. No, this is 1647 after the KJV was written. This is the word of God, this is the word of God. Let's drop down to the under uh, highlighted part. All which are given by inspiration of God to be the rule of faith and life. These militant this is inspiration of God. Number, and this came out in 1647. So I, I, I just want to, I want to try to have a time reference. The KJV was the first draft was finished in 1611. Now in 1647, these men are saying this is the word of God. But when you go read the intro of the KJV, None of the translators says this is infallible. None of the translators says this is inspired. They're telling you, we're not trying to do a new Bible. We just want to make an improvement on a great work already. So now you men, about 30 years after the translation, you're saying it's the word of God. God inspired this. We're going to find out. Number four. The authority of the Holy Scripture for which it ought to be believed and obeyed depended not upon the testimony of any man or church, but wholly upon God, who is truth itself, and the author thereof. God wrote this Bible. And therefore, it is to be received because it is the word of God. How many of you have up to already? I, I found so one this week. Someone else posted something this week. We had like three or four this week that got posted. Mario, you posted something. I posted something in Psalms or somewhere. We're up to like 70-something adorations, and you tell me God wrote this. Let's drop down to uh, five, the highlighted portion, the full discovery. The full discovery it makes of the only way of man's salvation, the many other incomparable excellencies and the entire perfection thereof are arguments whereby it doth abundantly evidence itself to be the word of God. It's so perfect. It's proof God wrote this. Uh-huh. Yet, notwithstanding our full persuasion and assurance of the infallible truth and divine authority thereof is from the inward work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can't God can't be wrong. That's how we know this Bible is infallible. Bear witness by and with the word in our hearts. All right, let's keep going. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, again, I'm just highlighting the year by 1647. Now, we're, we're up to 2020. But you imagine keep hearing this for 300 years. From 1647 to the 1900s, we got these people saying, this is the word of God. Ain't no mistakes in the we got Israelites repeating this mess on their channels. I believe everything the Bible say. I'm like, brah. You, to win an argument, they're saying this crap. Ain't no mistakes in the Bible. Yeah. Let's keep going. Nine, the infallible rule of interpretation of scripture is the scripture itself. Mm -hmm. And yeah. therefore, when there is a question about the true and full sense of any scripture, which is not manifold, but one, it may be searched and known by the other places that speak more clearly. So by two or three witnesses, it seems like they, they talk a noble, talking good, but your if your foundation is off, Chef, you know, once you your foundation is not square, your whole house is going to be garbage. No matter how much paint, oh, this is the best, uh, uh, what's the good paint company out there? 
uh, Sherwin and Williams. Yeah, we're not going to that. You can put Sherwin and Williams on this house. Your foundation is crooked, boss. This house costs 2.4. Your foundation is crooked. That's what the Bible is. Let's keep going. Huh? The supreme judge by which all controversies of religion are to be determined and all decrees of councils, opinions of ancient writers, doctrines of men, and private spirits are to be examined. And in whose sentence we are to rest can be no other but the Holy Spirit speaking in the scripture. You're telling me the Holy Spirit is speaking in scripture, but we don't found like 70 something errors in your Bible. Again, I'm just pointing out since 1647, this is what you've been learning in seminary. When you idolize these people because you think they got something worth idolizing, you got to repeat this stuff to get their degree. Have y'all ever went to an ordination service? It's an initiation. I went to my brothers. It's an initiation, like a gang, like a fraternity. They got the togas on. You got to repeat these confessions, and then they're going to turn your tassel or put your, 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 your little uh, ribbon on. It's a cult you're in telling you the Bible is an errant word of God. So let's get back into this book. Um, we have it in-house for those who are local. Um, it's all online as a um, Google book for $9.99. And this is the Bible, the story of the King James Version by Gordon Campbell. And we're just going to just destroy that the whole Christian dogma that the Bible is inerrant, it's infallible, it's the work of God. It's not the work of God, it's the work of men, and we're going to give you witnesses. So how many of y'all still have those scriptures y'all wrote down about your favorite ones? Or y'all know in your minds, y'all favorite scriptures? Mm -hmm. Call a couple of them out. Which What are y'all couple of favorite passages y'all like? Psalms 47. The light, the most high is my light. My salvation. That's one of the staples of Sunday school. Second we learned that the first one. 14. What is it? Second Chronicles 7, 14. My people called by my name? Leave not on the west for the day. Psalms 5. No, no. Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, I think, or Proverbs 4 or 6. Chef. Psalms 1. The Council of the Ungodly. Stand not in the Any others out there? How's that go? And that smooth, smooth text, and it reads so eloquently, right? <laughs> and you mean to tell me these men wrote this in uh, 57 BC, and you got a perfect copy of what they said? Mm. It ain't faded, ain't no words missing. Who did we learn gave us these smooth prose and style of writing, y'all? Who did we learn gave the us Romans. these? Not the Romans, I, the names on the screen. Y'all remember the names? The Reformers. What'd you say, Gerald? The, the, the Reformers. The Reformers. Tinsdale and Coverdale took the English language and cleaned it up and made it nice and flowy. So no, no, what, what do you tell you when you talk to Muslims? You know, Shakespeare wrote the Bible. Ain't gonna get you no witnesses. And put you on the corner, word, word, true God, true God. What you, you outnumber, you the only Christian. You got these brothers, <laughs> most of them got straps on them telling you that Shakespeare wrote the Bible. Won't give you no, no sources, but you know Shakespeare wrote the Bible. Shakespeare ain't wrote no Bible. It's these men here, their, their work is the root, is the skeleton or framework of the Bible. Shakespeare was a And Shakespeare was a brother. So let's get back into his work, uh, and uh, I don't know if, if y'all understood the magnitude, but I, when I read this, I was like, whoa. Let's start with page 14. Gordon Campbell, page 14. The popularity of Tinsdale's New Testament continued to antagonize the English clerical establishment. In 1529, Sir Thomas More condemned Tyndale as a Lutheran, which he was, 
and declared his New Testament to be heretical. Mm -hmm. He also touched on an issue that was destined to be reviewed by the KJV translators. Revived. Revived. Okay. Yeah. He also touched on an issue that was destined to be revived by the KJV translators, which was the use of ecclesiastical terms. So there's an issue. What, what church terms are we going to use for these translations? Read on. The instructions given to the KJV translators included the old ecclesiastical words to be kept. For example, the word church. That's all we needed. When I first read this man's book, and I'm like, what do you mean instructions was given to the translators? You just told me in the Westminster Confession of Faith that God wrote this Bible, that God inspired, that this Bible is perfection. Can you get a perfection by man? So if God wrote this Bible, and now you were reading that instructions were given to the translator, you gave God instructions? Wait. You see the questions we got to ask? Dr. Seminary, you're telling me there's no mistakes in your Bible. God wrote this Bible. God won't allow mistakes to be written in his word. But now you got to give these translators instructions. Do I see the magnitude of this? Next slide. I'm just highlighting here ecclesiastical terms. This is church terms. We didn't have no church. Us Nazarites was on the run because we accepted Messiah. So our own nation turned on us. So these church terms, which church has given us these terms? Your Catholic church. So your Bible is coming from the Catholic perspective. Oh, you're a Protestant. I don't pray to Mary no more. But you still die eggs. Mm -hmm. You still chop down trees and drag them in your house. So you need too much better than a Catholic. You're just a cleaned up Protestant. That's all it is, Chef. It, it gives more weight to uh, in Timothy, where he's telling you how to build a church, how to keep his priests to be. All in my notes, Chef. All in my notes. But we hear now, and this is the flow. We hear now. We brought it out. I know Shamar, y'all probably can't remember so much we, we go over. But what we brought out, there's a little fancy term. Um, it'll come back to me. Anytime you have something written in a, in a text or in a movie that's out of place, there's a little fancy Greek word. I can't think of it right now. So put it this way. Mark and, and Eddie in life, there's a blooper reel at the end where they're driving in the truck to, to Mississippi. And as they drive in the truck, Eddie Murphy had his cell phone in his pocket and his cell phone rings. And it messed the shot up. Because you can't tell people it's 1950 right. and you got a cell phone. But Eddie Murphy made a joke out of it. He answered the phone. He says, hello? I know it's 1950. I'm the first one with the phone. <laughs> so it made the booper real. But that's out of place. It's, it's out of sync. It's something to do with out of time. I've gotten the word of it. So when you got Paul telling me that a bishop should be and a deacon should be, that church government it didn't exist in Paul's day. That's What's called an, an, an anachronism. Thank you. I, we can always have been actually. He'll bring it out to a woman. Anachronism. So Man. that's that's something that uh that that's doesn't belong <laughs> in in that time period. Or even having a messiah that's white, that's an anachronism. So Anna means against and chronistic means time. So for Paul to say a bishop should be and a deacon should be, Paul, you died in like 75, 80, the Catholic Church wasn't set up yet. They were still following idol worship. So for Paul to write a letter to a bishop and deacon, and eh, it's false doctrine. Paul ain't gonna, because now we got John, who's the oldest, saying, I too am an elder. Why didn't John say, I'm a bishop? Why didn't John, John say, I'm the head of the deacons? Listen to me. John says, I too am an elder. So Paul, Shawal, who's hijacked your letters? Nah, nah, see, you gotta, nah, we ain't going with that faith no more. 
produce your witnesses. Why is Paul talking about bishops and deacons and he died before the Roman Catholic set up their church? It's anachronistic. It's against time. It's like you telling me, oh, yeah, I, I had a Benz uh, 600 and 19. Nah, the Benz didn't drop that model till 2000. You're lying. Sam's got on people for Game of Thrones, too, because when they were sitting at the tables, they had like Starbucks or some type of like coffee cups. Yeah, and people were like, you can't have it. So that's the same type it of event. Right. It's like it's time. It's like, so right there, we're going to pull that back up, Chef, in, in the New Testament part. There's multiple things that's, that's anachronistic. Your language you're using, your, your, um, your literary devices you're using, the Israelites don't talk like that. The Israelites don't write like that. So this, when we get to the New Testament, we probably won't have no more visitors. They got that. We believe it. So, actually, uh, thank you so much for being that wingman. Uh, anachronistic is the word I was looking for. So let's get into the commission of the King James Version of the Bible. This is Gordon Campbell, the uh, King James Bible story, uh, page 32. The commissioning of the King James Version, the Hampton Court Conference. In the second half of the 16th century, Queen Elizabeth presided over a church that was increasingly divided. The enthusiastic Roman Catholicism of her half-sister, Mary Tudor, had driven many Protestants abroad in the 1550s, and on the continent, they had experienced forms of Protestantism that were deemed purer than English Protestantism, which still retained many ceremonial vestiges of Catholic origins. So what? Which still retained many ceremonial vestiges of Catholic origin. So we're Protestants and we're a little bit more pure than the other Protestants, but we're still retaining some of the practices of Catholicism. Let's keep going, it gets worse. While the exiles returned on the accession of Queen Elizabeth, they became known as Puritans. Mm -hmm. In 1559, Elizabeth established a Protestant church but there was a growing minority of Puritans who felt uncomfortable with church government by bishops. The ceremonialism of the 1552 prayer book and the queen's attempts to keep ceremonial conservatives on side by advocating traditional vestments, mm -hmm. reintroducing a crucifix. Say what? Reintroducing a crucifix in her chapel. Did you all understand the magnitude of that? So the Protestants and the Catholics are fighting. Rome is saying we are the mother church and you are a Roman colony, England. So you need to follow the mother church and y'all need to be Catholics. But now England's like, we're breaking away. We're protesting. And now Queen Elizabeth is a Protestant queen. So she's saying, okay, we're not going back to Catholicism but we're going to introduce some of Catholicism. More importantly, we want that crucifix. So what does that mean? That means before 1550, no one had gold crosses around their necks. Pastor, what are you doing? Mm. Pastor, what are you doing? No one had a Jesus piece told them I believe in Jesus. It's Catholicism. So all you Christians, Protestants, you're in church tomorrow with gold crosses on. You're just a new Catholic. Before 1550, the Protestants didn't want no crosses in their church. It was Elizabeth saying, yeah, we're Protestants, but give me a little Easter. Give me a little Christmas tree. They just kept taking the name. So she's probably one of the first ones. But this, this wicked witch now, no, it's, not, it's a different one. Different one. So I wanted to point out here, reintroducing the crucifix in her chapel is huge. It's telling us, all of us, anybody got the cross tattoos? Fell victim, don't worry about it. Most likely give you son. He forgives you. We thought it was something holy. It was like, no, it's, it's Catholic. None of the Nazarites know about crosses in their buildings. None of, I want a reminder of one of the worst days of our nation. 
I want a reminder of, of the, what y'all did to him. So even the first Protestants didn't rock crucifixes. That's huge. That's huge. Let's keep going, y'all. We're going to get to that. Daryl got his hand up. Go ahead, uh. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just thinking, like, I mean, it's clearly in violation of the commandment, you know, not to have any idols, not to have anything in the heavens, on the earth, or in the sea, below the sea, below the earth, whatever. And, um, you know, the early believers understood that, but, you know, that's compromise. We see that compromise in what, in what they did, you know, and what, and what uh, Queen Elizabeth did by bringing that crucifix in. And now, like I said, all these Protestant faiths fell right in line. And they follow it too, you know, with all of the idols. So it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's you can see why they would want to overlook the laws, you know, because it would, it would condemn them. It would condemn them clearly for a lot of things they violated. But Gerald, but Gerald, we don't worship the crucifix. Uh, you think we worship the cross? We don't worship the cross. That's what they hit us with. Mm -hmm. It don't matter. None of the none of the believers in Messiah would ever put a crucifix around their necks or in their buildings. None of them would do that. And to what you just said, that like, uh, yeah, that they don't worship it. It's I find it ironic though that the cross is front and center in like most places, you know, most churches. So when we're facing it, lifting our hands, singing the song, that's what we are. You know, that's the object of our worship. Like. Mm -hmm. They're playing, they're playing mind games on us. You're saying I don't worship the cross, but it's it, it you got it positioned so huge that my eyes are, are drawn to it. They're playing word games with us, Chef. To me, it's the equivalent of a mother in the ghetto who lost their son to some type of violence, wearing that bullet or a knife, however they son with the pathway, with it on their neck. And you I have friends, but I just speak for me that when we lose family members, we got shirts to say their name, remember, and we're going to celebrate every year right. on their birthday. They got their shirts on. They got their balloons. They were decent balloons. Right. So, you, hey, instead of y'all wearing crosses, little cousin died from a gunshot. Y'all had y'all bullets on your neck. What? What's this that made? When you put it like that, they're gonna get defensive because it sounds they know it sounds silly, but that's what you're doing with that cross on your neck. It, it, that, that's how we, we have to break it down to the minutest levels to get them to see that. And they ain't gonna have no scripture response. It's gonna be all emotional commentary. My feelings. My feelings. Did he hear you out? Go ahead, Officer. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, so it it all this reminds me of what Constantine said about himself. In this sign, we shall rule. So that that sign or that symbol we know fast forward is is the cross. And then when you go throughout history from Constantine all the way up and, and you go to the the uh, Spanish Inquisition and you go into the Crusades that's them conquering people by means of that sign or that symbol or that cross. That's how they conquered people. They came over with their language and they came over with their religion. But the right. first thing that you saw on the front of that boat was a big old cross. Right. That's, the first, that's the first thing our people saw that was already over here, the natives. And that was the first thing that some of the other Spanish people saw, they saw that cross. When you go to the Philippines, that was the first thing that they saw. That's why they're Catholic over there all in the Philippines and all of, of, of South America and all of, of the South Pacific Asians. Those are, those are Christians and Catholics over there because by that sign, they were ruled. Facts, uh, facts. These are things they can't argue with. Uh, the water about for that. Let's go to the next page, uh, 30, pages 33 to 34. In January 1604, King James assembled a group of bishops and moderate Puritans at Hampton Court Palace for a three-day conference. The leader of the bishops was Richard Bancroft, Bishop of London. 
Remember that name, Bancroft. But again, use a textual criticism. King James is, is, is assembling a all-star team and he grabbing moderate Puritans. What, what, what makes you a moderate Puritan? That's how their, theolo their theology creeps into the Bible. If you are a translator, you should be offering your theology. You ever seen the translators on the news and stuff? Or, or the, um, what you call those people? Interpreter. Interpreters. You ever see, I be cracking up when they, they show the interpreter, sometimes they be like, they get a fat. Mm -hmm. so like, they, that's how they said it. Like, but when you were translating, you don't show no emotion. Zamaria so said, thus says, according to Zamaria, Zamaria said, I'm not giving my feelings. And Zamaria said, he gonna knock you out. Zamaria said, when he comes, he's gonna knock you out. That's, that's the message. Yeah. Translate, that's a translator. I'm not giving you my, my feelings. He said that. He said it like that. He said it like that. He wasn't angry. No, he didn't say when he gave you, he will knock you out. So when you tell me a moderate Puritan, what do you mean moderate? What makes you a moderate Puritan? This is how people put their theology inside your Bible. Let's keep going. So Bancroft is the first name. Uh huh. And the leader of the Puritan was John Reynolds. Reynolds is the second name. Uh huh. President of Corpus Christi College, mm -hmm. Oxford. Okay. The debates proved inconclusive, but one item not on the agenda was to prove of historic importance. Mm -hmm. On the second day of the conference, the 16th of January, According to William Barlow's grumpily anti-Puritan sum and substance of the conference in 1604, John Reynolds propo proposed that there might be a new translation of the Bible because those that were allotted, that were allowed in the reigns of Henry VIII and Edward VI uh -huh. were corrupt and not answerable to the truth of the original. So John Reynolds is proposing there be a new translation. I thought God inspired it. So is, is John Reynolds your God or what's going on? Because you're telling me he's inspired. God told him to do this. But now this man is telling you the conference, they couldn't get one side versus the other. No one was winning their debates. But one thing that came from this conference, John Reynolds says, we need a new translation. Not God inspired it. John Reynolds is saying we need a new translation. Let's keep going. This account is puzzling because it was the great Bible. That's the big one. Mm -hmm. That was in use in the reigns of Henry and Edward. And from, Rain and from which Reynolds drew his three examples of erroneous translations. The Bishop's Bible in use in 1604 was a product of Queen Elizabeth's reign. But in Barlow's account, it is not mentioned. Clearly, something has been lost in the retelling. So these pagans are arguing in their own time that the Bible translations are corrupt. Now, this man says we got to do a new translation. Not God-inspired, not infallible. This man is telling you we need a new translation. Page 34 to 35. The, bi the, bishops, the bishops who were content with the church's use of the bishop's Bible in 1568, were unhappy about the idea, but it appealed to King James because it offered the prospect of an authoritative alternative to the Geneva Bible. So this is when I had to hold my tongue because you said something last week. I knew you don't remember it. You know, remember what you said last week? You said it sounds like something to me. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like, yeah. Give me that like A flat. <laughs> you said it sounded like politics. I was like, ooh, he don't know how hot he is. Because King James was like, yeah, I want a Bible for me and my people that I can say it happened under my reign. So Shamaria was right on the money. Your King James Bible was a political product. Politics is usual. Wow. Your Bible is all how's inspired by God. This King James playing politics. Keep going, Al. Con. 
So he wanted to offer a alternative to the Geneva Bible, which contained notes that were critical to the authority of monarch, monarchs. To what? He wanted to, which contained notes that were critical of the authority of monarchs. What are you saying? Right, what is he saying? What is King James saying? Read one more time, Op. Okay. He's saying that he, he says it appealed to King James because it offered the prospect of an authoritative alternative to the Geneva Bible, which contained notes that were critical of the authority of monarchs. The, Gene the Geneva Bible. That was the bishop's Bible. It's the Bible of the church, but it has notes that's critical of monarchs, which is their um, government kingship establishment. That the like. So, so King James is like, yeah, because your Bible is critical of the kingship. Mm -hmm. So we do need a new Bible. I thought this was God doing the work. How, how are you going to change the work of God? King James is already orchestrating how this thing going to go. So yeah, I'm on, I'm off for this black pride out here. King James a black man. Else, oh, so? is he talking about the law? Is he changing the word of the Most High? Because if he's changing the word of the Most High, he's a devil. He's a devil. He don't want nothing that could be, appear critical of a king. So when it says that, like like in the Torah, a king or our kings are commanded to write a Torah by hand. So you know the Torah by heart. So if he deems that to be critical of a king, he don't want that in his Bible. That's what King James is thinking. Everything critical of a king, I want it out. That's what he's saying. Let's keep going. And it added the advantage. It, it, had, the, it had the added advantage of conceding something to the Puritan side which would otherwise have emerged from the conference with every proposal rejected. So now you wanna, you wanna put things that's gonna be advantageous to the Puritan. This is your theology being inserted to a holy text that you, you Westminster saying, this is the holy word of God. How's the holy word of God and you injected theology in here? Y'all see where we going? Y'all see why we say it's Frankenstein? You see why we're asking you, please fast and pray, and we need true word from the Most High. And when we, we get together, we're going to get confirmation, and you're going to get your confirmation. You're going to be sitting on something that you don't want to share, and someone else is going to say something, and that's going to be your confirmation that it wasn't you, it was the Most High. Mm -hmm. That's how this thing is going to play out. Keep going, huh? Beyond these practical considerations, a Bible emerging from a conference convened by the king, and that would be dedicated to him, was in effect an endorsement of the idea of a monarchical national church, of which King James was the head. What you say? King James is the head of the church. Who's the head of our church? And who's his head? You see already? Y'all up there, I got the KJV 1611. Who? Huh. It don't matter. <laughs> it's garbage. It's garbage. Keep going. I think it's worse. That is why the dedication of the king to the king describes him as the principal mover and author of the translation. I thought Westminster said it was inspired by God. Mm. Daniel says, who is the author of wisdom? Y'all saying King James is. Black man is God, I guess. Yeah, miss me with that crap. Miss me with that crap. Keep going, huh? Indeed, the phrase sets up a parallel with God. Uh-oh. The first mover and the authority of all author. things. And the author of all things. So, eliding, eliding obedience to God with obedience to the king and ratifying the claim of King James of, of James to be king by divine right. Hmm. So they say we're gonna elide, we're gonna merge 
the obedience to God with obedience to King James. Hmm. Are you kidding me? We don't put that obedience on, we don't merge that with nobody. I'm a man, not even the son gets that. Not even Messiah gets that. I'm obeying the father over everybody. But we know his son is not going to contradict the father. So I can take Messiah's word as solid. How y'all say? Messiah is solid. But you're telling me you're going to merge the, the authority obedience to God with obedience to the king. Are you kidding me? That's your King James Bible, family. Yeah. Get a mic. You way back there, uh, Salakia. But hold on till um Navarre sort of jump jump the gun to you on you. To just real quick, just to go along with what you just said, that's why you have to is known as the word of Yah, the living word of Yah, because he does everything the most high says. And he already told us everything that I've been made known of my father, I've been I've made known none to you. So it ain't nothing, just like you say, he ain't gonna contradict the most high words. Huh. We know that. The water for that. Uh, uh, Joe, you got something out? Man, I'm looking at the last part of that, that uh, sentence um, and ratifying the claim of James to be king by divine right. What, 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 what prophet anointed him to be king over mm. what? Pertaining to the, what, what you mean divine right? You know, so you can see how they move and they was moving reckless from the jump. You know, so this whole concept that the King James is the un. Un, uh, you know the what they call it, the uh, infallible word of God. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like I mean they make it seem like the Most High directly inspired him, like he did prophets to make that thing happen. Come, come, and man, we I'm trying to get y'all out of here. Hey. How see a divine king? You ain't in Jerusalem. Mm. We don't come from England. So you united, you united UK, Ireland, and Britain. Congratulations. That's the public lands is wicked. The holy land is Jerusalem. So what do you mean you divine? You mean not to us, it's why you mean divine? King James? Listen, you the whole you is black at this time. You know what I mean? You're changing the word and you're making your people you even okay. Let me be objective. I'm, 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 let me relax. Even if you allow your people to put you on the pedestal as you as you have a equal authority with the most high, you are in error, you are going to hell. Because like Paul, when they went to worship Paul, what did Paul say? Paul said, Get up. I'm a man like you are a man. Even the angels, the Malachi wouldn't let the apostles worship them. The apostle, the angel told John, I'm your fellow brother. So King James, let me be objective. If you didn't tell them to obey me like you obey God, if you allow these translators to put you on par with the great I am, you are a devil. You are a devil. So uh, the water will for that. Uh, let's keep going. Try to get y'all out of here. Instructions and procedures. Bishop Bancroft's objection to a new Bible had been overruled, but he was wily enough to ensure that if the project was to proceed, he should have a controlling hand in the selection of translators and in the formulation of the terms of reference that would guide their work. So this Bancroft is, um, they're using the old English word wily, he was sinister, sneaky, conniving enough. I don't want a new translation, but let me chum up with King James so I can pick the team. Because if I pick the team, what that means? I'm going to control what goes in and what comes out. I thought this is the word of God. Y'all seeing this? Right. Instead of just writing what was what was there, you know, from the original manuscript, they're picking and choosing changing, adding, taking away. Cut you know, that, add that, cut that, add that. Yeah. A translator, I just translated what's here. Most high is going to kill women and children. We're going to lose people. That's what it says. No one's going to come to our church and be preaching that. That's what the text say. He's going to kill women and children. That's what we're writing. Let's keep going. 
there were 15 rules to be observed in the translation of the Bible. I'm the only one hearing this. 15 rules. 15 rules. Huh? What'd, what'd you say? Man. <laughs> I'm about to fall up my chair on my good leg. Man. You're telling me that the law is done away with, mm. and we got faith and grace in Jesus Christ, but your Bible was built with 15 laws. Mm. Are you kidding me? You up here preaching a, a grace doctor to my family, to my brethren, and your Bible was built on laws. Y'all understand this? You understand what these people are going to hell and they're taking our family with them. The law is, we don't need the law no more. But the Bible you used was built on law. 15 of them. 15 of them. And you tell them, you got preachers saying we don't even keep the big 10. <laughs> The big ten will get you on the boat with Messiah. But they, the word he's reading has 15, 15 laws. It's, it's, it's really so unbelievable that it's really, you can't even really say anything. So what you say? You can't make this up. You're preaching grace, 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 and faith, 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 but the book you're pulling that garbage from was built on 15 laws. But you're telling me, me trying to keep 10, I'm a heretic. That's why, fam, let me calm down. That's why I'm telling y'all, mature and keep a brother with you and, and ask most high before you respond to that post. Because we're at a level where these people don't understand what we're reading. They think they're really reading Paul. They think they're really reading Isaiah. You're reading the works of these men who decided what's going to get translated. That's why we're finding all these errors. It's like, how did it, you got a PhD in theology, how do you see these errors? Thank you. Just so you know, in my commentary, um, I don't find it strange that, because I think the word talks about trying the spirit by the spirit. I don't find it strange going back to that statement that you were saying, how these men have added, taken away, you know, put in their philosophy here and there. I don't find it strange that Christian pastors do the same thing in their sermons. They adopted the same spirit, that same spirit that was on mm -hmm. them has followed down into these pastors. Mm -hmm. Y'all sat in on the service with me about God gonna ride you like a donkey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, the same <laughs> Yo, we're not gonna just... <laughs> For you, he's going to rock you like a donkey. He rides on the clouds. He ain't going to rock on me. Oh, man. Uh, but you're absolutely right. That was his doctrine, the philosophy. The text they, the text they make, he going to ride us like a donkey. <laughs> that was, oh my goodness. Oh, Father, help us. Help us. But that, you hit the nail on the head. And I think I think it's some credence to what you're saying without building our witnesses right now, because it's spirits coming through these doctrines. It's spirits coming through these religions. You was foaming in the mouth, he come on Honda, he's coming on a Honda, and none of our ancestors recorded saying it's talking like that. When Paul said I speak in tongues, he meant I was multilingual. I was multilingual. But it, it became an issue. I don't know why we're going here. It became an issue even in their day. Should we read the word of God in other languages? That's how snobby Israelites are. If you start saying praise the Lord, Moses is going to slap fire at you. Praise who? <laughs> no, it's Barak Yahweh, the great I am. Our ancestors are snobby. Where you get that? Where you get that lamb from? I bought it from the Gentile. I don't think we eat none of that. <laughs> Why'd you go to the Gentile when Chef got a whole farm of a lamb? Because you don't know how that Gentile fed that lamb. What if that, what if that Gentile was feeding that lamb pig hair? So I would answer like, no, go, go to chef for your lamb. That's how snobby we are. So when Paul said I speak in tongues, he wasn't talking about Hikamu Honda. He said, I'm, I'm multilingual. It's a, it's a, 
He beat you, Chef. Example. Oh. <laughs> was not really. <laughs> not really, but the springs first. Oh, no, I was going to say. Um... The battery is down, y'all. Hello. Okay. Um. I was going to say, too, I guess my philosophy would be that, you know, these, these children, young children, to me, because the father knew us before he formed us, right. to me, I feel like they're the closest thing that just came back to me, like being with them all the time. And my coworker was saying, you know, this is the one I said, she's all in the church and she leaves prayer and all of that. She said, girl. I just bust out laughing because my child will ask me, Mom, why you got to do all that when you pray every time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, like, this, this, our stuff is simple. I think all of that, he from a Honda, I'm coming on a Honda, thought about a Kia, but about a Honda. <laughs> like, it's, it's, not, it's not all of that. So when she, I'm going to get that on the shirt. I'll put that on the shirt. When she said that, like, stuff is simple. Out of the mouth of a babe, a actually asking you, why is that necessary? When the Mosai, first of all, I, I know I didn't forget you, Chef. The, Mo, the Messiah says, the Messiah himself says, when you pray, pray like this. Go into your closet. That's why I was all, but when I read that, I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't want to pray no more in public. But as you mature, you get over that stuff. But the point is, don't be saying stuff to be seen. There's a man, he, he, he's passed away from back home, but they would hire him hire him to pray at funerals because I ain't gonna say his name uh, I'm good friends of the fam well you know one of them anyway how are you paying this man to pray because he really prayed and then he would have oh father we need somebody in now oh somebody <laughs> and then all of a sudden everybody doo -doo 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 -doo. Praying and somebody's crying for you, and somebody's being yeah, and somebody's looking for you. And he had that deep baritone voice that sounds so melodious. He had that Anthony voice, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Father, now we looking for you, yeah, people crying for you. <laughs> so they would pay him to preach fear of the prayer funeral. This is that. Steph. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna read uh, Isaiah three uh -huh. and. What I want to bring out is uh, 3 and 12, but I want to start off at 8. Isaiah 3? Yeah. They got some rock on. Smile. You said Isaiah 3 and 12? Shemai, I'm going to read down to 12. Let's have 12. Oh. Bring out to 12. So good. <laughs> but Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen. Because their tongue and their doings are against the most God, to provoke the eyes of his glory. They show of his countenance, do a witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and destroy the way of thy paths. King James has reminded me, being wicked, we being led astray by these wicked leaders, going to put himself equal with the most high. King James, you allow them to put you on par with the Most High. Now we're reading a text where people can twist doctrines and philosophies. Mm -hmm. And now you don't need no commandments, not even the Big Ten. All you need is faith, like Abraham, that he is the Son of God, and that's your team of salvation. But the book you're pulling that garbage for, from was built with 15 laws for their translation. This um, precept, as for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. That's talking about slavery, huh? I was going to ask him to pull it to, to, to check it in the to torture to make sure to see how it reads. Okay, because that just imagery pops in my mind of the women and children of the uh, other nations, how, you know, 
you had to, you had if they, if your slave master had a son and he told you to do something, yeah. you gotta do it. He's and, calling you boy, right? Instead of calling you Mister John, come here, boy John, or come here, John. Like this man is older than your father, mm -hmm. and you calling him by his first name. So I took it as that, but I wanted to check it in the Septuagint before uh, I confirmed it. Uh, but yeah, Chef, for intents and purposes. That that's what wickedness, this wicked Bible got us, this wicked doctrine got us. You know, Nariah? Uh, I don't know how the translation would read, but I look at it like these times now as well. You know what I'm saying? How the women are glorified, they pretty much run the world. Yeah. And these people, these weak parents and wicked parents are making their children idols. Yeah. Worshiping them, doing whatever they want them to do. And because and I, I I I saw that too. Like you you done spoiled your child. Now you scared to correct your child. Right? Mm -hmm. Now your child is running the house. Like that. Like that. Even even when I shot up over my mom, and I shut up over my mom about, about thirteen, about twelve ish, eleven. I started creeping up on her. She was only five five. But by the time I was 13, 14, I'm over her now, and I still knew I could only get it so much lip. <laughs> Cause she gonna get up on you, and, and, and even though she's coming up to my chin, and I had enough respect and fear, not not to even try, even though I know I can beat my mom now. It wasn't even my mind that I'm let me stand my mom down. Like, like you crap. Because if I did do that, my brother's like is right here. Like, and, and my brother, if, if your uncles, if your cousins found this out, you slammed your mom. Yeah. The whole house is pulling up. Now these these children are got their parents scared. Their parents are locking themselves in their in their bedroom. Yeah, Tyrone is out there just. You know the whole <laughs> so yeah, for our tips and purposes, Shamar, yeah, I think it could be applicable like that. And then to just reading the step to it, it just yeah. speaks totally different. It says, "Oh my people, your extractors strip you, and your extortioners rule over you." Oh, my people, they that pronounce you, they that pronounce you, they that pronounce, I lost my place, they that pronounce you blessed lead you astray mm. Mm, and pervert the path of your feet. Now that's, that's what he Now that's talking about, right? Hey. Oh, none of us got degrees from theology schools, right? But we know enough that's, the, that's Christianity. Mm -hmm. Bless, 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 bless. Right, we got a market. You got mark that it's, it's, corruption. It seemed like the first part may be about you know slavery, right. but the second part is definitely talking about. Your pastor told me you ain't blessed because you ain't tithing enough. <laughs> and then now you think like, man, I did buy a eighty dollars shirt at the mall. I could have get that to the to the Lord. I could get that to the Lord and been blessed. No, why in the world they talking about children and oh? <laughs> Let's see. We, we got to get through this, y'all. I want to keep y'all uh, so because y'all y'all gonna be. Rid of me for a couple of weeks. So, Mariah. Mm -hmm. There's you, more batteries up here, y'all. Uh, this was just turned off. Could you clarify one more time what those 15 laws were, were um, just for the sake of the audience? Oh, we're going to do one better. Huh? We're going to read them. Okay. Uh, so, so, I'm black. I'm poor baby black. I'm a, I'm a nigga. They don't believe nothing I say. So just, I done been to jail. I ain't got no degree. I dropped out of college my, my junior year. So, just, so they don't believe me. I ain't got no YouTube channel that got 4,000 4, views. And, <laughs> so I got to do you think You think I'm talking without no, no, no books about I know. I ain't from that school. I got I got clips for days. Because I don't want you to believe me. So check the witnesses out. So just to make sure that I'm on. I have understanding. These 15 laws that you referenced were what the pagans used in order to set the criteria on how they were going to construct their version of the, of the Hebrew Bible. That the Westminster's 30 years later, your tummy's inspired, but they had rules that control what they can do and how they can do it. But now you want to tell me it's inspired and follow the word of God. Well, madness. Madness. So yeah, uh, we trust me. I, I already knew they ain't gonna believe nothing we say. Y'all speak that lots of rock dust LQ from here on out. Put, put, put me in the ring with them. 
put me in the ring with him. So, I ain't been training, but Zamori, I'm so, I got enough picked up frustration. Oh. The main, the main takeaway I hear, and it, I know in this case, King James was melanated. Right. But I still can't help but hear, I'm white and I say something. We can't, we can't go there because, um, I got a book this brother uh, shared, so-called Puerto Rican shared years ago on YouTube. I was like, soon he said that I went and ordered it. It's at the house. A lot of these European men, they were black. And this book that he shared that I got, for some reason, this man described the men of King James Court. And one man was described as short and portly and dark. I mean, he's short and fat and dark. So a lot of these, you can't, you can't read these names and think that they are whites or whatever. It, it, it's, it, it's a lot of history. So we can't say all oh, these men were white. A lot of these men were melanated, educated, like, like, like Tinsdale. Tinsdale was a black man. Y'all couldn't, y'all couldn't catch his image fast enough to whitewash. So Tinsdale was educated in black. Ultimately, this just goes back to our wickedness, the consequence of our wickedness. Facts. Let's put it back on our people. So that's why I'm telling you, King James being black, that means nothing to me. If you ain't telling me that I'm the, I'm the children of Israel, if you ain't saying that the Most High's laws was resealed by my, my Hamashiach, you are a devil to me. I don't care if you, your gums are black, your teeth can be black. If you ain't teaching the truth, you are a devil. It ain't about no skin color. So here's the rule, rule, aka law number one, that gave you your KJV Bible. The ordinary Bible read in the church commonly called the Bishop's Bible to be followed and as little altered as the truth of the original will permit. Uh -huh. This rule specified the version of the Bible was to be a revision of the Bishop's Bible for which the 1602 edition was used. So we're not gonna write a whole new Bible. We're just gonna improve the Bishop Bible and the Bishop Bible was built upon Tinsdale and Coverdale's work. So that's why when you tell me Shakespeare wrote the Bible, no, do some scholarship. Tinsdale and Coverdale gave us these pretty proses and, uh, you know, uh, that, uh, lay me down to sleep. Da, 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 da. It's these men who gave us this work. But now they're saying, we ain't doing a whole new thing. We're just going to make some edits. Let's keep going. Rather than a fresh translation from the ancient languages, uh -huh. As the revisers say in the preface to the King James Version, the translators to the reader, their purpose was not to make a new translation, but to make a good one better. Uh-huh. Who so that too? Oh, God, you had some Yeah, I was going to say, this is what my, my mindset was, because he was asking, were they taking the Hebrew and then making rules to that and making their Bible? But they're just taking... That's why he did all those eight Bibles before we got to this one. So they just took the compilation of those, which in this, it says they used the Bishop's Bible, and then they made those 15 rules to apply to that to make the new one. Frankenstein. That made sense? Frankenstein. To, to improve it rooms on the to bishop's on the, other, the, the bishop. So it's just like, we ain't doing, we ain't start from scratch. I ain't going to learn Hebrew. We're just going to take what they did and make some improvements. So where are those facts? And, and y'all know, y'all all came up in, the, in, in grade school. What happens if you cop, copy off someone in front of you? <laughs> Teacher knows. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how you know I cheated? I ain't cheat. You you swear you at the class standing for a desk. I ain't cheat. I ain't cheat. She she put the evidence. You wrote your name. You <laughs> You copied his name. So y'all y'all these translators for the KJV y'all didn't have enough integrity to even go vet if their translation was true. I'm just going to take their translations 
and add on to it. That's why if the foundation is off, the whole house is going to be off. So those eight previous versions, y'all ain't even going back to see if they messed something up. Y'all just, and we can trust Tinsdale. Houseway, how? This shows me now the visual, which we talked about a long time ago, that telephone game of how important. Y'all see how, was y'all here for that? Y'all wasn't here for that. You see how everything's been built? Stupid, you were speaking yeah, for a minute, about a year. Yeah, that imagery. What? <laughs> a half a decade. <laughs> All the teams in them, but, but everything's been a compilation. Everything's been adding on. Well, yeah, because now we, we eight rows down. Eight rows down. So, yeah, so uh, number two, the names of the prophets and the holy writers with the other names of the text to be retained as near nigh. Yes. That, yes. That, does that mean near, though? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, as nigh as may be, according as they are vulgarly used. The term vulgarly, uh, vulgarly does not have its modern sense of coarsely, not cuss words, but specif specifies a preference for the English form of names over the Hebrew and Greek forms. Wow. That's, that's what it's saying. This as will be seen below is the rule that was most often transgressed. So they didn't follow that rule. They didn't, they used the Greek term. Genesis is from Greek. Leviticus is from the Greek. Deuteronomy is from the Greek words. So they didn't follow their own rules. No, I, I can't say and, and by our shots. I don't know. I don't know those languages. I'm just following what they did. Monkey see, monkey do. Oh, the chef has something. I was just going to point out, I was having a conversation with somebody and, you know, he thought he was dropping dollars. So he, he referred to in the barber shots. It's like where... In the barber shop? He said barber shot, but the way he said it, like, he spelled that for me? And he spelled it out. I was like, you know, that's great too, right? He kind of looked at me sideways, like, what, what are you talking about? He put the E's in there? Yeah. He spelled it just like it's out of stuff. They said out there is cheap. Right? And I was trying to say, like, every different to it. And it's yeah. like these sounds are adoration. It's like, like, we'd be here for hours. That's what I'm telling y'all. Like, y'all are, are, are taking this work seriously. Y'all taking the most high seriously. And so the most high is counterpoting y'all and, and bringing y'all up to a level. You got to pray for these people, let them go. You, if, if, you, if you still got hair, you're going to lose it. If your hair is all black, it's going to turn gray. Just pray for them. And if they come back to you, then you be patient. Okay, let's open up the Bible. But if you just want to go back and forth and nah, -uh, that's false. That's false. Listen, I got time for you. I a witness or just a testimony to that. Um, just thought about it. I was talking to Zamaria and he was saying, how he ran across the people. Y'all know how you do. He ran across the people and they were saying that the angel impregnated Mary. And uh, they were saying, oh, I got the proof. I got the scripture. And he said, okay, well, send me the scriptures. <laughs> he said, maybe I missed something. Maybe they, I'm thinking they about to give me you know, something that maybe it's in a, you know, a, the book I haven't read or something that's just going to really hit me. And so they sent him the scriptures and he said, <laughs> oh, in your own in the scripture that you send to me, you, you contradict in your own position because it's still saying she was a virgin. And um, he was like, you know, I was going to bring it to he was saying to me or to Naraya or to you, if it was something crazy. I said, but see, this is what I was telling you and what morale has been saying. You are so far above now just by coming to the class consistently 
that you can see for your own self. You, call us you don't have to call me. No, or you that life is garbage. And that's what he said. <laughs> so often. That's what he, exactly what he said. He was like, okay, I don't even need to converse with you anymore. You're blocked. And I was like, man, just all praises to the most high. I don't need to take you to my brothers. <laughs> you don't want to see that right now. Like, like, you me all. Just oh, crazy. Fun family, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you because I'm not betting a hundred. So if they catch me on the wrong day, I may commit unrighteousness and, and scar one of the most highest children. We got to ignore them. That's why if we're in public, we're going to be together. So if I lose my cool, somebody say, let, let me take over. Uh, yeah, like get this. <laughs> we, we don't want to get Messiah a black eye, you know what I mean? We don't want we don't want all this 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 teaching to follow deaf ears, and we don't want to turn people off by this. We want to make sure we're moving in righteousness to heal and to help, and not to cut people. Yeah, we have to cut. We we going to, but then we're going to be there to help mend you. That's the word. That's the word. All right. Um, so work quick. It wasn't into the mic, but I did did some check on them. Yeah, yeah, I see you responding to me, Sam. You want a wife? I text about her, bro. Like, you okay? I text her at 323. And I text her again. I'm working, man. I've been working late. Oh, praise the water for that. So, um, this is why I'm telling y'all, we're not, we're not being snotty, we're not being, you know, any of those, those little words they use. We love everybody. We that's why we, we fellowship other people. We would rock God that you have an understanding that it is a covenant, that it is feast days. If you want to have a conversation how we're computing things, then that's gonna cost for a sit-down. Because I don't want to give you a, a on a fly conversation and you just listening to the pick the pick it apart. No, let me produce witnesses maturely so you can take it and verify it. So if they don't come back and ask you, just say all oh, praise the see you in the wilderness. Glad you know that it is it's feast day that we gotta follow. Don't try to be like, well you know your teacher wow. Don't don't be that guy or or gal. I know you you getting sharp too. So don't be that guy. Let them have their shalom. Let them have their shalom and if the most high bring them back to you, then give them a full course meal. This is how we did this and this is how we this is the witnesses we have. So then just say, you know, most high be, be magnified because these people don't, they have no clue. They, they, they go out spending $200 on Bibles and, and proud of that Bible. Like you just spent, you could have gave me $200. <laughs> <laughs> we just got some ammo. <laughs> <laughs> Three, the old ecclesiastical words to be kept. Does this mean, for example, for example, the word church to the word church not to be translated as congregation, et cetera. So this is basically saying, according to these rules, they didn't want the word church to be translated back to congregation. Right. They want, they want the word church in there. Right. Because church in, in this era, church is already pointing back to Rome. Right. Or now the Church of England. So that's why they want they want to keep the word church there. But for our point, I thought God was writing this. You're deciding which words get translated as what. Not that God told me to use this word. I'm the trans. You see how sinister this is? I apologize for asking the same question so many times, but just to make sure it's very simple and clear, is it safe to say that these scriptures or these Bibles were revised to fit certain people's agenda? Um, Okay. They injected their theology into this Bible. Got it. No matter which translation you have, the previous, the, the, the first eight still had those people's doctrines in those Bibles. Now, the King James right now is the ninth one we're dealing with, and it still has these translators' doctrine, how they feel about the text. And that's not what you do when you're translated. You just write what you found. The children of Israel are the chosen people. I don't change it. The children of Israel were the chosen people. No, you just change the whole context of what that scroll said. 
when you put that word past tense. You got, so it essentially makes sense why they discredit Elijah Warren for Dodge because like what you were saying earlier, they took the actual Hebrews and told them they couldn't even have any input on it. They didn't want the Jews, the Israelites, to even work on the text. Wow. So you, you don't even know he you don't even know air quotes Hebrew. You know what the, the, the Greeks told you was Hebrew. And now, fast forward to our generation, the Greeks altered our writings and now the Yiddish, the Germans that added a whole bunch of cocky naming words. I don't even you don't know what you're saying. And and the greatest, the greatest or the most egregious foul I found, there was a song we used to sing that I, I learned under this un, uh, other congregation. And they put the they, they put the song of Moses into we're calling it Yiddish, but it's really Greco Yiddish because the Greeks changed the, the language first. And then the Germans came and added their little nonsense onto it. So to be more accurate, it's a Greco-Yiddish dialect. But there's a part, there's a part of the Song of Moses, it says, Kid Chanu. Kid Chanu. And what they're trying to say is Kadash Nawa. But you don't know the real language, it's Kadash Nawa set apart is our God. So you're saying kid chanu. And kid is what? Kid is a goat. Kid is a goat. So you're telling the most high that he's kid chanu. Some you see how sinister it is? So that's why I, I got into the habit of putting everything back into the original. And it, it was a process, but that helped me learn the language. Like, okay, let me, what are you trying to? I know what you're saying. Let me put it back into the original. And I, I got a clip I did about the, the song of Moses because what's his name? What's his name, y'all? Malcolm. Malcolm Noble, Noble got a version of it. Then some other sisters got a version of it. And it's like, man, like, I know they don't know. So I said, when you break that down, kids should know you call the most high to go. A go. That's not knowing the language, true language. That's that's. Now, the most high is fully grace and mercy, but how long is his grace and mercy supposed to last? So, anyway, let's, let's that was a tangent. Where we at, Hop? That's it. That's it for that uh, page. Rule um, number four. Mm -hmm. Law number four. The implementation of this rule was to be a persistent source of Puritan objections to the KJV as Puritans appropriating Tyndale, Tyndale's argument preferred congregation to church, wash to baptize, elder to senior to bishop or elder to senior or bishop and minister to priest. So all this is under a rule number three, just more examples how these men are picking and choosing what word gets translated as what, opposed to you're telling me that God wrote this. Which one is it? Is God inspiring this or are you picking and choosing with these men? That's just more evident. Rule number four. Mm, that's kind of When a word has diverse significations to that to be kept, which have been most commonly used by most of the ancient fathers. Pagan church fathers, Catholic fathers being agreeable to the property or propriety mm -hmm. of the place and the analogy of the faith. Diverse significations means more than one meaning and the propriety of the place means the context in which the word is used. The assertion of the authority of the church fathers, pagan Catholic fathers, and the need to conform to the doctrine of the church, the analogy of the faith, were anti-Puritan rules because Puritans tended to believe that the church fathers had no authority and that doctrine should spring from the Bible, not the other way around. Again, this is just more context uh, of men are choosing, men are deciding, 
And then it's the foundation, you don't even know the real language. So how are you making these decisions about, uh, in this context here, it means this. You don't know the language. You don't know, the, that's all we're bringing out here. Oh, so what rule, was that all the five? No, we gotta read five. The division of the chapters to be altered, <clears throat> either not at all or as little as may be, if necessity so required. Again, they decide if we're gonna divide these chapters. And, and first of all, the first man who gave us the chapters was a, a Dominican friar named Pagnini or something. So again, you're just adding on to men's work. This ain't, this ain't the most highest work. So now you're King James, you wanna decide if, if we need to divide these the chapters, we're gonna have another council. The most high is nowhere in this King James Bible, nor is he in any of the other Bibles. It's the work of men. Keep going on. By this time, the division of chapters into verses had become embedded because verse references were an aid to memory Hebrew and Greek manuscripts have been divided in various ways since the late antiquity, but the system adopted by the KJV revisers had been introduced by the French publisher Robert Estine, Estine yeah, mm -hmm. who divided chapters into verses in a series of Bibles in Greek and Latin published in Geneva. Again, Robert Esteen or Estine is a man. He's not God. He's not the Most High. He's not the Messiah. These books called Bibles have nothing to do with heaven. They, they are the works of men. Do we thank the Most High for them? Yes, because even in the slave Bible, even in that heavily redacted slave Bible, that they took everything up out about the Exodus story, our ancestors, like the Most High was saying, this is about us. So you... You could put us on, a, on, on the moon if you could. Well, that's another story. No matter where you try to hide us or hide the Most High's word, he's going to find his people. That's the whole point of this series. These books are not going to set us free. It's the great I am. That's, all, that's why we're doing all this drawn out work. This is going to be the legacy we stand on. The Father's going to talk to us to get us back home. Uh, let's keep going, y'all. Do you finish that up out? These divisions had first appeared in an English version of the Geneva Bible of 1560 and had since become established. So these divisions, these chapter breaks and headings are only from 1560. Paul, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke know nothing about chapters. And when Messiah grabbed the Isaiah scroll, what does this text say he did? Luke 4 and 21. He found the place where it was written. This is the year of the Most High Yah. He didn't go to chapter so and so, verse so and so. He found the place where it was written. So even in Paul's day, they don't know nothing about, oh, Paul's letter, verse 15. It's the works of men. We're going to wrap this up, y'all. Number six, rule, AKA law number six. No marginal notes at all to be affixed, but only for the explanation of the Hebrew. Uh, the interdiction, I was getting tired, y'all, so it's stuff getting small. The interdiction against expository mar marginal notes may have originated in King James' dislike of anti-monarchial notes in the Geneva Bible. So this is just pointing out all the decisions of how that Bible was composed is by King James and his translators. Nowhere do we, so far, have y'all read where let's fast and pray? Nowhere it is in let's fast and pray. Is I think this should be this. I, I don't, I'm King James. Don't put nothing against the monarchy in this Bible. The works of men, philosophy, doctors. Essentially, this is just one big compilation of idolatry because not one single time, like you say, or it's like they got all the answers already. And not one time have they sought the Father for anything, no counsel, no guidance, none of that. 
See, man, man, listen. I can't wait that we don't have to work no more. We just, just chop it up all day and let chef stuff us to be pop. But I ain't gonna pick on you. I know I, I put a lot of work waiting on you. Going back to first or second Ezra. When Ezra wanted to do the work, what did Ezra say? What did he what, what did he ask? Y'all if he'd be that? worthy, if he was worthy enough. Y'all remember that? Ezra's the most high called Ezra and them scribes that he said, Father, if we be, they have burnt your law. And now, Father, our nation don't have the way to plead to you. Father, if I found favor, grant me the wisdom to remember your law from the beginning. I just read that, didn't we? See how the apocryphal, so-called apocryphal writings make sense to us? That's what he's saying. I think I can remember. What do you remember? Ezra says, Father, give us the Holy Spirit before Christ, before the crucifixion. Father, give us the Holy Spirit, Spirit to record your law for our posterity. So that was a prayer. Then the angel said, fast. Wow. Y'all see everything we do, we can find in the text. We're not making up articles here to, to behold. Yes, we're going to be fasting for. Let's do all that. Our lives is on the line. They're hunting us down. They're coming up with laws and all kinds of vaccination glaze to hunt us down. I don't need no horseshoes close enough. I think he said, no, when you come to us, have the confidence God told us to get out of Greensboro. That's what we need. Our lives, our children's lives is on the line and y'all playing church. Skip down to seven, right? Come. Such quotations of places to be marginally set down as shall serve for the fit reference of one scripture to another. Places are verses. This rule gave the authority to the revisers to produce a system of cross-references. So those little notes in your Bible, cross-reference, these pagans did that. And sometimes they're on point, but every once in a while, y'all found out like that cross-reference don't line up. Don't make sense. That one we found out about the... um. This is the blood of this is the blood, my blood of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And you put a cross reference, don't line up. Don't line up. Everything we've been getting is from pagans. So you on your YouTube channel and, and come to the bay and, and click on the like and subscribe and hit the likes up. We, we got 3,000 people in here, only 100 likes. Like, it's just more and more we read that Frankenstein analogy. It's just, it's, it becomes more and more fitting to me because I keep hearing words like giving the authority here, giving thanks to the Pope. There's so many different authorities, different heads, more than one head, you got a monster. Mm. And our, with our culture, like you said, the authority is we rely on the most high. They get all the authority from these different sources. From the big, like, so like the fact, I don't know if y'all, like if that was, just something that came to your, your brain, but about the Frankenstein thing, but it's just, it's just becoming more and more fitting that y'all call this Bible that because it's so many, it's a monster. It came from, I was, I was coming across that, um, I was digging deep and we're, we're going to get back into it. But as I was reading this, scrutinizing this, this, this source, I'm like, I said, this is Frankenstein. You know, we, we grew up in the 80s with, with the Frankenstein show. Black and white show. I, you know, I know, it's like, you know, me and Chef kind of a little older, but it was a black and white show, Eddie the Monster and whatnot. And as I'm reading this, so it's like, this Bible is Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein, man. So yeah, the Most High, like, you know, this, the Most High is with us, and we keep getting confirmations. But the takeaway here, we need to be holy people again. We need to fear Yah again. Mm. To know if you don't commit yourself to him and transgress without fighting, he can kill you. He can kill you. Let's keep going. Let's bring this home. Um, so eight. Every particular man of each company to take the same chapters or chapters and having translated or amended them severally by himself. Severely or severally? Amended them severally. So, separately, separately, separately mm -hmm. by himself, 
where he thinketh good, mm. all to meet together, confer or talk about what they have done and agree for their parts on what shall stand. Do y'all need any explanation on that? So they're, they, break, they're breaking and, and so it was 54 total translators. I think one or two died before they got to the work. So the ones that remain, they divided into six different companies. Y'all, we're going to get to it. Y'all take these books, Genesis to Malachi, or, or no, they didn't do that big clip. Y'all take Genesis to Deuteronomy. Y'all take, uh, what's that to Deuteronomy? Y'all take numbers to such and such. And that's what they're doing. So that's strengthening our Frankenstein. That's why we catch y'all in errors, because y'all didn't sat down together in one room and do it all together. We're going to stay on the same boat. No, uh, we're going to do Genesis together. So I don't have the time to go back and check Genesis. I had Malachi. I'm trusting Zamora. That's what these pagans are doing. That's why we're we're finding all these contradictions that don't match the culture. A man, therefore, a man shall leave his his mother and father and cleave to his wife. Chef, what do we call a man who's running behind a woman? A sinner. I'm not running behind no woman. You run behind, you cleave to me. I got the rifle. I got the muscles to drag this deer in the house. What I'm, what I'm cleaving to you for? What a woman. What culturally do what makes sense to cleave to a woman? I'm the man, you cleave to me. The most high gave me the knowledge of how to kill, how to hunt. He gives me the power to destroy other nations. You cleave to me. Even in this uh, westernized uh, construct, we're so far removed from that idea. Uh, but in our culture, that's where our inheritance was with the man. So you couldn't receive your inheritance from your father until after the day. But he had land and other things that you get gleaned from it. Cattle, fruit, whatever, on his land. That's why the prodigal son left. He's like, man, just give me my stuff now. I'm about to go wow. Wow. Right. right. The other brother stayed at home. Your boy came back, but hey, we had this boy. I gave you something. But he still had an inheritance that he went back to. Still. Mm -hmm. that, he had a, that his brother, who was righteous, still had a split with, with the, the wicked brother. He got jealous. So, and, and then even not even the Israelites, the other nations, me and, me and you talked about this morning, David and Goliath. David, not David and Goliath, Samson and Delilah. Samson begged his father, go get me that Philistine. And Manoah, Samson's father says, we got Hebrew women up and down Jerusalem. Why do you want this Canaanite? Samson, under the power of God, said, go get me her. And this Philistine left her family mm -hmm. to attest to Samson. No, no culture in the old world is a man cleaning to a woman. Because even in other cultures, those men don't leave their heritage to their daughters. They know a man is going to come if my daughter ain't ugly. A man's going to come snatch my daughter up. So why I'm going to leave my heritage to her so a stranger that's going to marry her mm. get my, no, my, my heritage is still with my sons. So even in the other cultures, this cleave to a woman don't fit the context. But now you give me a Bible to my, a man to leave his mother and father and cleave to his woman. It's anti-cultural, against culture. Anachronistic. Y'all do this now, living on your baby mom's couch and sofa. Real men don't do that. I sleep in a car before I live off you. I walk to Texas before I beg you for something. That's what a real man do. We're not, we're not begging, we're not at the club balling and your girl bought your rims. I remember one night just sidebar, we in there having a good time and jukebox, all of a sudden, girl came in showtime. I'm taking them rims off that. Oh. You take a ball with a big face bezel watch on rims. And she come in here telling you, I'm taking it off. 
That's that's the culture we're in. But in this time, men don't, men were men. I'm going to hunt, and it may not be a mansion, but I'm gonna build me a little tent. I'm gonna have some salam where I'm at. That's what real men do. It may not be a five six bedroom with two or three floors. But I got peace when I can turn the key. Peace of mind. I got peace when I turn the key. That's that's the culture we come from. But now you give me this Bible, a man should leave his uh, mother and father. And we can't find in the text where men did that. In the text, a man always go get that woman and she leaves her mother and father. But I'm preaching good word to you, huh? This is the holy word of God. Let's finish this up, y'all. I'll show y'all go ahead. Yeah, the water. Um, yeah, that 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 scripture always didn't sit right with me because a man does not cleave to a woman otherwise he's not a man by definition of what a man is but then when you use you see the other word when you see the word cleave and how the nations are going to cleave to us how can that same word apply to them the same way that a man is supposed to do for a woman that's backwards no but the scripture that does make sense to me that I that I that I always keep on handy is Genesis 18, 19 that talks about Abraham. And the most high said, uh, for I know him, that he will command his children and his household after mm. him. Mm-hmm. And they shall keep the way of Yahweh. Mm. So so the the we all know the epitome of what a man is supposed to be. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta give our due credit to Abraham. Oh. And how and how a woman is supposed to be. We got to give our credit to Sarah because uh-huh. they set the standard of what a man and a woman is supposed to be. That's why we even have the covenant to begin with. It's because of them too. That, that's, otherwise, uh, otherwise we don't have no we don't have no covenant. So he had his house in order. Genesis eighteen nineteen. You want to know how to be a man? Genesis eighteen nineteen. Uh, I mean, I don't know why we going on this tangent, but you know, people want to King Solomon. I'm, I'm King David. Man, listen. Abraham and Sarah was the perfect example because was their marriage perfect? Y'all know what happened. <laughs> take my maid, put her out. She looks so much. She told me to take this. You told me to take this woman. That told me to put her out. So it's a perfect line example how they wasn't perfect. And then Abraham, like, can you imagine? I wish we could have Sarah part of this because these modern Hebrews won't give it to you. You want me to tell them your sister? You want me to hide in the chest? You, you're a punk. You know when Abraham took her to Egypt, Abraham said, listen, these people got different cultures. They're going to kill me for you. Tell me you're my sister. And not only that, I'm going to put you in the trunk. You know, he says, I, I, I just got my hair done. I can keep you in the trunk. I'm going to tell him I'm your girl. And you don't get me killed. That both of y'all on the side, he done got killed and now he done got snatched. And then Sarah had to spend a night with that king. I want to hear Mama Sarah tell about that story. Yeah, Abraham carried behind. (laughs) (laughs) What would an angel come to you? (laughs) Could you imagine that ride home with her on the back of the camel? I can't believe you came to that man. And that man, I'm trying to do all kinds of things to me. (laughs) These are real people. But like I was saying, Abraham and Sarah is the best example because their union was flawed and we can read about it, but Abraham loved Sarah to the end. And the text said he didn't choose another woman to Sarah died. So I don't know why we're going to continue. Gerald. Gerald. Yeah, Gerald, you want to go ahead? Can you hear us out? You got yourself muted out? Uh, you got yourself muted? Okay, All right, you talking about me? Go ahead. Yeah, we got you. Yeah. Yeah. You said Gerald, right? Yeah, yeah. I was saying, I was going to say, uh, I was going to say how um, it was like the, let me back on what um, Abshah Yah said. I was going to say how even now, I was listening to an interview recently um, with um, with uh, Yaki, Yaki Awakening. And um, he was pretty much saying how he was from the Hebrew cloth or whatever. But 
uh, he's shunned by the community because a lot of his views that he have in his research and his learning, his education and so forth and what he does. And although he, he do a lot of good stuff on the health side, you know, of course, there's a lot of his views that we don't agree with. But, you know, just thinking of that scripture, it was references made to the women, to the woman and her role and so forth. Um, and he was saying how, you know, a lot of people, even in the awakening, you hear the woke community talk about how it started with the woman and how the woman is the focus. And he even broke down his like structure of how, what his headship was. And it definitely won't the most high to Christ, the man and the woman. It was, it was the woman above the man. And it was just like, you know, so it just, I mean, I don't know, I guess his, I guess, I guess maybe he's looking at that scripture, not understanding the Frankenstein and the influence or whatever. I mean, you got those people who even in the Hebrew awakening that look at the, 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 the scriptures as this is what it is. And then it spins all of these other doctrinal understandings that's not accurate when you say it all together. So I, I just I just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, uh, and, and, and you know, it's, it's a combination of things. I, is, is one, a lot of people got itching ears. You want to hear, they long to hear something new. And you and you love you impressed by shiny things. You know, our, our, them spinners had our people gone. Yeah. So our people are impressed by shiny things. Oh, he speaks so well. His last video got five thousand views. Or well, everybody knows them. None of that stuff makes a, a bit of sense. So you got itching ears, and then you got brothers who they they crave the attention. Mm. They want to be somebody. And that, that combination is, is, a, is a deadly combination when it comes to these scrolls. Why do you want to be up here? Me and Shepard, y'all just going to play I really don't want to do this. Man, we are empty nesters. I could, I could be jet seeing. Like, man, I got, I got hobbies I like to do. Why do you want to be in the spotlight? To be a know-it-all? Because I, I think about your, I, you. When you're a real leader, you worry about the people. Are, are, are they getting this? Are they are, are they living right? Because if y'all come in here and spot it, y'all can get us killed. The plague's out there, and y'all come in here with unconfessed sin, and then we like, what's going on? Shamaya like back there fell on the toilet. Like, what you mean? Why Shamaya? Like, what, who, who's we can't play with this thing. We all gotta be living this thing for real. So People set themselves up to be duped, Gerald. That's what I'm trying to say. People set themselves up to be duped, always wanting to be in the pot. We said it before, how we picked churches back in the day. How many people they had? That parking lot be full. Worship team. Park, praise the worship team. <laughs> Their church got a bunch of businesses and consumers in the parking lot. We set ourselves up to be duped. So how is my witness what you just said? A few days ago, I was, uh, I forget what we were talking about. But I was telling her how much that I'm praying that the power of the Most High comes upon the earth and his spirit really starts setting us apart and these religions really start getting crushed. And I was saying things along the lines of like Ananias and Sapphira. Come. How when Come. The High has spoken to him, no. like why you, you know, you over here lying on the, and now the spirit is bearing witness against you Come. pretty much. So I was telling her how I'm praying for the days where the spirit is so heavy on us that people that walk in here unworthily speak to us unworthily, yeah. do things in our presence. They drop dead yeah. because our people are so wicked. They don't believe nothing. Yeah. And that fear, that's what we're talking about. That fear of the most high is not in the earth no more right now. That's what it is. And that's what I'm honestly praying for. People ain't going to believe nothing until folks start dying. That's just the unfortunate reality. And then the other side, when we when we go to someone's house who had cancer and they just take their breathing tube off. That's what I just told them. Like, like you know, like what's big yeah. brothers walk in say shalom and she all of a sudden stopped coughing. Oh yeah. Like yo, what's I'm praying for that. Now you know the first thing's gonna be negative. He's a witch. Oh, like, no, I keep the laws of the most high. Yeah, like you know what I mean? And then so. That's going to be the chance the most I give you glory. What, what, what are you in your house? So get the swine out of here. Keep the law. Because if I leave here, if I give you this good manna, because you asked me for it, most I just bless you. You just seen a manifestation on you. Now I'm telling you how to live holy, and I leave here, and you don't follow up. 
Make sure you know, you know, you know that person died. Huh. Shamari got a story about his sister cousin, was it? Cousin. cousin? These things are coming. That's why, like, we going on a family trip, a cruise in, in June. I'm dreading it. Because, you know, at the captain's table, what I'm going to eat, I'm ordering all clean food. You got shrimp, crab, alligator bites. Lobster tail. Lobster tail. Our lives is a judgment to these people. You see my fringes on you. you I see you eyeballing my fringes, but you don't want to talk about it. And the most high is recording this. You could have asked my son about this. I'm telling you, don't put no Easter candy on my desk. And you don't ask me why. Don't put no Christmas card around me. You don't ask me why. Or I tell you why. And you do it anyway. I'm telling you, it's not in the Bible. And it's not enough to make you feel young. So now when you drop sick, pray for me. I, I'm not. I ain't gonna lie. I, I ain't, like, what do what they say? I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> pray for you for what? I've been telling you for five, six years, we the people and we the holy people. Now you, pray, can you pray for me? I'm not, I'm not gonna waste my father's time with you. It just is what it is. Let's finish this up, y'all. All right. Nine. As any one company hath dispatched any one book in this manner, they shall send it to the rest to be considered of seriously and judiciously, for his majesty is very careful in this point. His majesty is very careful in this point. His majesty, who are they referring to? King James. So here's another instance. They're saying, if we have discrepancies, send it to your brother. He's going to take a look at it. Then send it to another brother. Nowhere do they say fast and pray. Hmm. Nowhere do they say ask God for understanding. This is how you got the KJV. Two votes for this word. Three votes for this word. Oh, this is democracy. Paper, rock, scissors. Pretty much. That's how you got this holy Bible. Now you're going to put holy Bible. Do you mind if I read uh, 2nd Ezra 14? Come huh. That what Shamaya had talked about and the question that you had asked. Come. Um, we got 10 more slides. We're going to get through this, y'all. Uh, four, second Ezra 14, verse 22 and 23. It says, but if I have found grace before thee, send the Ruach HaKwadash, your Holy Spirit, into me, huh. and I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning, which were written in thy law, right. that men may find your path like they which will live in the latter days may live so that's the him being clean without spot or blemish mm -hmm. receiving the holy spirit by keeping the commandments mm -hmm. verse 23 and he answered me saying go thy way gather the people together and say unto them that they seek thee not for 40 days so it shows you that he was about to fast right after that. And then that we can unpack that for the sake of time. I'm going to speed through this real quick. But his intent and his reasoning to, for that power, I don't want it to be a, a, a name in Israel. I don't want it to, so my, my name can live on. I want it so our nation, our posterity survives. Mm -hmm. So these people are translating so King James could be known great, so England could have a Bible like the Romans. Your whole intent is off. Nobody to say we want to please the most high. We want a Bible for England. Because our King James deserved his Bible. Let's keep going out. Ten. Uh, rule 10. If any company upon the review of the book so sent doubt or differ upon any place to send, to send them word thereof, note the place and withal send their reasons. 11. When any place of special obscurity is doubted of, letters to be directed by, I mean, to be directed by authority to send to any learned man in the land for his judgment of such place. The phrase by authority probably means by authority of the synod of bishops. That's already letting you know that this, is, this has nothing to do with Israelites or Hebrews because we don't have bishops, we don't have synods. Our elders come together and we, we judge a matter. 
So this let you know this Bible, this KJV has nothing to do with us or the, the Most High or His Son. Uh, point number, uh, law or rule number 12. Letters to be sent from every bishop to the rest of his clergy, admonishing them of his translation in hand, and to move and charge as many as being skillful in the tongues and having taken pains in that kind to send his particular observations to the company, either at Westminster, Cambridge, or Oxford. Has nothing to do with Jerusalem. It has nothing to do with Jerusalem. 13, mm -hmm. the directors in each company to be the deans of Westminster and Chester for that place and the king's professors in Hebrew or Greek in each university. What'd you say, Al? The directors in each company to be the deans of Westminster and Chester for that place and the king's professors in Hebrew or Greek in each wow. universe. So he's saying that each a director that was in charge of certain sections of the translations were to be placed as uh, teachers of this said word. Dang, the school. But then what does it say they call it? They, they are the king's professors. Did y'all catch that? They are the king's professor. So if you are the king's professor, you are being influenced and guided by the king. That means you can't write a textbook, you can't teach a class that I don't approve. So now, let's go back to something Nahamya said. I bet you don't remember, I had to hold my tongue. Because I knew, I knew this was coming. You said you was having a conversation, and you said to that, bro, you think they're going to tell you who we are? Because these organized schools have been approved by the local government. Who runs local governments? Kings and bishops. So you think they're going to come out and tell you, yeah, we sent the Hebrew Israelites to America. That's why, like Benaiah says, go back to the 1400s and 1500s before all this colorism was taking the world over. Because those explorers told the truth and the house of Judah was sitting on ships. They come out and plainly and say it because it, it was no big deal. Like, yeah, everyone knows those are Jews. But these men are called the king's professors. Now you think, I, I, yeah, I graduated from Harvard. I'm summa cum laude. Summa cum laude is Greek, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So you have mastered a Greek philosophy. Has nothing to do with Israel or Jerusalem. I'm going to get out y'all, man. Where we at, Al? 14. <clears throat> These translations to be used when they agree better with the text than the bishop's Bible. So when these when these translations agree better than the bishop, you're going to use these translations. Run them down out. Tyndale's, Matthews, Coverdale's, White Churches, and Geneva. So go get the last segment. This who wrote your King James Bible. No, it wasn't Shakespeare. No, it wasn't the White Man Bible. These scholars, black and white men from Europe, gave you your KJV. And it had nothing to do with skin color. It's all about, are you going to write this King James doctrine like King James one? We're picking and choosing to give you a Frankenstein. That's all we bring it out. Continue on out. White Church's Bible was the common name for the Great Bible, so-called from one of its printers, Edward White Church. So y'all know that big white Bible your grandma got? That was called the Great Bible. 15. Besides the said directors before mentioned, three or four of the most ancient and grave divines in either of the universities not employed in translating to be assigned to the vice chancellor upon conference with the rest of the heads to be overseers of the translations, as well as overseeing Hebrew as Greek for the better observation of the fourth rule above specified. Men are being chosen to be overseers. Westminster Confession of Faith said God wrote the Bible. Westminster of Faith saying it's inspired. Now we're finding out that's a bunch of lies. These men were chosen by King James and King James Court. It's going to get worse. I got a couple more. 
I'm trying to get y'all out of here. The king, <clears throat> the king's professors, more commonly known as Regius professors, are nominated by the crown. Stop. Stop. This is when you have to be a, a textual critic. Now you're called the king's professor. And now since you're the king's professor, you have to answer to the king. But now to be a king's professor, you have to be nominated. So who do you usually nominate when you want some dirty work done? People I can manipulate. Control. Yeah. Control. So now I'm not picking Shep. He don't listen to nobody. You can't be one of my professors. I'm going to pick the weak-minded. So I don't have to threaten you, but I can just say something. Your family would really appreciate if you... Uh, that's how these people play where they come from. They don't come out with a gun. And, no. Your posterity will be known for centuries. And the man puffed up with pride. Yeah. So you thought it out. You started out maybe want to be holy, but now the king is waving money from you. Your name could be spilled in history. This is how you got this Bible you preach it from. It's holy. It ain't nothing holy about this Bible. That's what I'm telling you. Stop arguing with these people online. They have no clue what they're reading. Let's keep going. On. They had originated as acts of royal beneficence at the time of the Reformation when Henry VIII had funded the original Regis professorships. Royal be beneficence. What does that mean? Royal beneficence. You smart today, Chef. We ain't got, we ain't got no education. You come out and tell me these people have been greased. Palms has been greased by the king. You're the king's boy. So now you're part of the translation team. So now it says a king is supposed to be stoned to death. I don't think we're going to write that like that. If the Hebrew scrolls say that's what it is, that's what we got to do. Let's keep going out. This is, uh, I think of two things I said before, uh, politics and then the Illuminati, how they say, you know, our, our, our pastors, preachers, teachers, they basically, their goal was to, uh, um, to infiltrate every section of government down to the church or the clergy, et cetera. Mm -hmm. To me, this gives like a small, like an image of how that works because oh and the schools schools mm -hmm. that's what i was thinking about mm -hmm. because if you are saying because you are one of these people who translated this work i'm choosing people from these translators and you're automatically a dean meaning you're in charge of the college that we are supposed to go to because they're so highly regarded if the dean is in charge that came from this line originally who do you think he's going to hire as a professor to teach the Greek and the Hebrew? So that means that that doctrine goes all the way back until you'll get one who, you know, rebels. They fire them and then or they go them. or kill them. And then they go write a book or disappear. And then if you look at it in a sense of politics, even though King James is the highest in this sense, in the political sense, if you change these people who were nominated to presidents, he would be the lobbyist. I hope I'm not. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm on with you. But with you. it's just this this is how the most high does for me. Like that the the grand scheme will just start popping in my mind and I'll just start seeing stuff. So this is what I'm seeing here. He is basic, even though he's over them, he's kind of like technically would be like the person that's in the behind the scenes. Help him master. They're going to put the people who are translating. So I'm going to big big. Right. They're going to put the people who are translating out in the front. Well, such and such translated it. This person translated it. But really, King James is the one that's like, hey, I'm the puppet master. I want you to make sure this is in, this is not in. And that's the same thing today. Democrats, Republicans, et cetera, you said royal benefits. Obama, we gonna get you. You get to be the first black president. You get to win the Nobel Peace Prize. You get to be the first one to do X, Y, and Z. Purple Heart. 
highest achievement. So the benefits, his name will go on in this, you know, garbage history forever, right? That's exactly what they were doing with this scripture. I ain't gonna take y'all there. I'm gonna disrespect y'all peoples. Dr. King, because you have been blackballed, so you say, how are you traveling? And you ain't working. I said the same. And, and they don't let our people stay in hotels. But we getting you at we finding you at the best hotel. Mm -hmm. You're getting subsidy from them mm -hmm. to teach our people about innovation. And now for, for, for you playing ball with us, we're gonna make sure that your name is you got monuments. You get a holiday. You need a holiday. You get students in every city. Mm -hmm. Just to tell your people we should be like them. Mm -hmm. It's okay to shop at Bills and Barbers. They got, no. And then what we say, when he started rebelling, they kill you. You gave I Have a Dream in 63. It took y'all five years to get mad about that speech. Uh, they, they, they've been playing chess the whole time. And we, we're just learning checkers. So King James Bible is garbage. These men are, are injecting philosophies. They're shaping their monster as they see fit. And King James is approving it. So don't give me that black. I don't care about King James being black. It could be blue black. Are you teaching the most high's words to people? Seth? I just want to add a little weight to what I was saying. Uh, you know, I was saying it's big biz. Y'all know Philip Morris, the cigarette maker? Come. They own a bunch of your food subsidiaries. Like crab, crab. Food, yeah, I knew that General one. foods. Mm -hmm. They they make it cereal. The same people that lobby to the FD, FDA, Food and Disease, I mean Drug Administration. It says, "Hey, this is good. You can you can eat a little bit of poison. You can you can smoke a little bit of this. A lot of it's crude. You can have these vitamins." So the tobacco oh, user. Oh goodness. You know the the little bit of nicotine, they say if it touch your tongue, you can die. Mm. It's like fentanyl. Oh, well, we're gonna prove that. Yeah. And they got control of all the foods that you consume. You're really concerned about me staying alive. <laughs> so you got the devil working for the devil, lobbying to other devils. Mm. This, this your king, Jack. That's what it is, man. This is the level you gotta go through. This like people say they want the truth to the uh, to the truth. This aligns with their truth. Mm. Now it's like I don't hear no more. Like like we all make that joke. We eat some. Don't tell me you got food in right now. Mm -hmm. No, if that's what it is, you gotta throw that. I, 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 next time, no, 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 you know, I just told you. I just told Sister Jane to see the replay. All them Cheetos, they got baby fetus. You got what? Baby fetus. Stop playing. Or natural seasoning that they call mm -hmm. yeah. I was I was uh, banging the machine at the job up. You know, when I was getting high, you know what I'm saying? Jungle juice, they read jungle juice. With oh my Cheetos. goodness. That was so busy. I didn't know she was doing like that. I don't know about, I mean, I own my tips. Pretty much. And honestly, with, when it comes to that, it's so much products that I, I could, I just had to give that one up to the most high. It's, I want to know though. I've I seen I it. Know. But no, no, it, it went, nothing on her. It, went, oh, it, went, oh, it, went, it went over my head to where basically, Everything says now every product is mm -hmm. I couldn't think of one product. Once I saw that, I'm like, Father, it's up to you. Yeah, like, but if you tell me it's baby, like I want to know. Like, like if you're not convicted, you're not convicted. Yeah. But if you tell me the baby fetus is like Gatorade, you can't drink Gatorade. I, I, I don't you, I you can't that. you can't let me get a coconut water for 200 ounces. Yeah, you could die from that. You yeah. just saw it. like it's yeah. so. Anyway, let's wrap this up because I know we've been going long. This thing said we've been here almost six hours. Um, where we at? When Henry, the, uh, it gets worse, y'all. When Henry the Eighth, it says that he has funded the original Regents' professorships. Did y'all hear that? 
Henry VIII, a king, funded the original religious professorship. Your schools have been set up by a king. So I'm not gonna have no books in my library that's not benefit my government. So like Chef says, I'm not telling y'all that the, the holy people of Israel is over there in America. No, those are Negroes. Let's keep going. But by the early 17th century had become an important mechanism by which the crown exercised authority in the universities. The Dean of Westminster was- Can you read that again, huh? Oh yeah, he had, it said by the early 17th century, so the 1600s, uh -huh. had become an important mechanism by which the crown exercised authority in the universities. So who's controlling the universities? The kings, the, the crown, the- Y'all see where we going? You've been charging me, making me go in debt to get your education. And it's been crafted and shaped to defeat your kingdom. But I'm from the Jerusalem kingdom. So do you think they're gonna tell you something to free you and let you know that you're from the royal kingdom? No, y'all come from monkeys and apes. And y'all was in Africa in huts. We get out your last watch, but that was it is garbage. Don't you is gibberish. But then there's no AI will use anywhere in antiquity. Let's finish this up. We got a couple more slides. The canon and the inclusion of the Apocrypha. Just, just the unlike, uh, unlike portion. The most surprising feature of the early editions of the KJV is the inclusion of the Apocrypha. So, Pastor, about the seminary, the first Bible had the Apocrypha. Now, why your church don't have it now? Because I say so, doctrine. Pretty much. Pretty much. We're moving on. Now, I told you how they, they it was 54 people originally that was awarded. Uh, 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 and I'm going to say this, but my actual, please go verify because I'm going from memory. But I believe it may come out in these next last slides. I believe these men were paid as translators. Because remember, if you got the skills I need, you are Hebraist, you speak Hebrew, and I need you, I'm taking you away from your livelihood. I need something to supplement my income. It's not a king is paying you. Y'all see how deep this goes? Yeah. Let's go. Just read the online portion. Uh, 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 the principles for choosing the members of the companies as the committees were called made the process relatively straightforward. And within five months of the Hampton Court Conference, Bishop Bancroft has chosen his teams. I'm sorry, the Most High had chosen his teams. Bishop Bancroft had chosen his team. Jesus the Christ chose his teams. Bishop Bancroft had chosen his teams. You see how this translation is not Holy Bible? Bancroft is, is chosen, choosing a, a, a team. And just go ahead and read some of the names. Assisted in small measure by Thomas Bilson, Bishop of Winchester. So here's another man, not God, involved in who, the, who these trans translators are going to be. The uh, surviving list. What am I reading that? Oh, yeah. The surviving list of translators are not entirely consistent. So we don't even know who really all worked on this thing. Mm, my goodness, man. I'm going to get out your way. Chaired by Lancelot. Okay. So that one of the first companies was known as the first uh, Westminster Company. And it was chaired by Lancelot Andrews, who was the dean of Westminster. Uh -huh. He was, by some measure, the most powerful figure among all the translators, mm -hmm. partly because he exercised very considerable powers of patronage, but also because he was one of the most learned men in England and he offered intellectual as well as spiritual leadership. Again, this is a man we can name, we can research him. Lancelot Andrews proved to be one of the most influential, influential translators of the text, and they looked at him as a father figure. Let's drop down to John Overall. Six of the men that Andrews recruited are well known. Uh huh. John Overall, the Dean of St. Paul's Cathedral. And then William Bedwell. Bedwell. 
he was England's leading Arabius. Mm -hmm. Arabius, Arabius had fallen under the spell of Andrews at Cambridge. He's fallen under the spell of Andrews at Cambridge, and then you're going to give me the four Gospels. Mm. I don't think no, Joe West. Richard Thompson. Richard Thompson, who was half Dutch and known as Dutch Thompson, was also a form was also a member of the Andrew Circle at Cambridge. Uh huh. He had a drink problem. So what? He was a drunk. I thought this was the Holy Bible. He had. He was an alcoholic. Come on, y'all. This is madness. Man. You got alcoholics working on the Holy Bible. Well, step program. <laughs> but he was able to lend his outstanding theological expertise to the project. When he wasn't drunk. Adrian Theravia, a canon of Westminster, was an outstanding apologist for escapacy. That's Greek. That's a Greek um, Greek government for church. It has nothing to do with Jerusalem. Like Thompson and Andrews, he enjoyed a European reputation for scholarship. He enjoyed a European reputation for scholarship. Y'all learn from us. So your European scholarship is garbage to us. The other members of the company were all broadly sympathetic to Andrews' theology and eschatology or ecclesiology. Uh, ecclesiology. Ecclesiology, but also had serious credentials as Hebraists. So Andrews is the dominant feature of the translators now, and they're respecting him for his exegesis and his ecclesiology. You know more than us. So I'm going to translate, but I'm really taking cues from you. Where's God in this? Where's the Holy Ghost in this? I'm going to get out y'all laugh. Uh, this is... The central section of the Old Testament. So this group is responsible for the, the, uh, the uh, central section of the Old Testament from, Chron from First Chronicles to Songs of Solomon. The company was supposed to be directed by the Regis Professor, professor of Hebrew at Cambridge, Edward Lively. Uh -huh. But although he was nominated for the post, he died before the company had had its first meeting. The key takeaway, these men are being nominated, chosen, not by God, by other men. His successor? His successor, Robert Spaulding, was a member of the company, so he may have become the new director. Another name dropped down to Francis Dillingham? Was a theologian rather than a distinguished Hebraist. So he didn't even know Hebrew. But he, <laughs> but he was well-connected in both the royal court and in the church. See, politics. Because he was all up in the royal court and good in the church, we chose you. Similarly... Hold on. Isn't this kind of like how the Nobel Peace Prize works? Uh -oh. you said? Their whole government, their, their whole award system is set up like this. Go over there and I, I want you to kill some babies and you're going to get wounded a little bit to make it look good. And when you come back home, you're going to be a war hero. And then you get a, a soldier who disappears, winds up coming out with the truth. He was over there getting high off opium the whole time. That's how these conspiracies get exposed. So they, they set their whole government up like that. They, like you said, these, these Illuminati's and these Jesuits. We got some videos y'all will we'll show you about the Jesuits before we get to the New Testament. It, it, it's deep, y'all. It's, it's deep. Let's, let's drop down to John Richardson. John Richardson was one of the earliest English Arminian theologians an unpopular position at Cambridge and had scholarly strength in biblical Hebrew. The final two. The final two members of the company both had Puritan, Puritan leanings. Puritan leanings. What does that mean? That means you have your own theolo theology that you're going to inject into the translation. So I'm going to skew this text to fit my doctrine. That's why you got these pastors, like you say, that spirit has creeped into them. Now, I don't need no law. 
I don't need no Moses. Just give me Jesus. And everywhere we read, remember the covenant. Remember the covenant. Come back to the covenant. Let's, let's keep going. On. Lawrence Chatter, Chatterton had been one of the four Puritan delegates at the Hampton Court Conference uh -huh. and was a good Hebraist. What you thought was Hebrew, the Yiddish, the Greco Yiddish, you don't know the true language. We got three more slides. The first Oxford company was responsible for the final third of the Old Testament from Isaiah to Malachi. Its nominal director was John Harding. This man was nominated by other men. Regis Professor of Hebrew at Oxford. You don't know real Hebrew, you know what they told you was Hebrew. But the presence in the company of John Reynolds, the leader of the Puritan delegation to the Hampton Court Conference, who had successfully argued the case for a new Bible, meant that leadership may have been passed to him. You could drop down to as a 17th century account. As a 17th century account explains, the translators had recourse once a week to Dr. Reynolds, his- We gotta meet once a week at Dr. Reynolds' house, uh-huh. In Corpus Christi College. And there it's said to, it said perfected the work, notwithstanding the doctor who had the chief hand in it was all the sorely afflicted with the gout. So Dr. Reynolds' house is the meeting spot so he's really the one controlling what's being put in. He has one of the final says in what we're going to translate. Not God, not Jesus the Christ, Dr. Reynolds and his team, his author, all-star squad. Uh, for the sake of time, just more names, Thomas Highland, Richard Bretz, Richard Kilby, Miles Smith. You can Google these men. I'm willing to bet you they go back to fraternities, sororities, these are men, wicked men. There's nothing holy about your Bible. Nothing holy about your Bible. And this is one of the last slides. The revision process. Stop. Well, what's wrong, huh? Y'all sharp than that. How do you revise something in God gave you this? How can, how can you improve on it? God said you just, how can you improve on it? Hmm. It shouldn't mean no revision. Why well, we got 10 different Bibles in here from all different publishers and editors if God wrote this? Hmm. Now you're preaching a doctor and sending people to hell with grace, 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 grace. And now you're pushing people ahead back, let it go. We had church in here. Yeah. Uh, but we, because we're dark skinned, we gotta be civil. Y'all so aggressive. You send the people to hell and paint us to be like we some fairies and some lunatics and we in a cult and you are in a cult. Mm. The setting? The setting was doubt, doubt doubly appropriate. First, the hall was the nerve, was the nerve center of the London book trade. And so the presence of the revision committee marked the trans of the KJV from a translation to a book. Uh, it took them a nine month process. And then one of the per per people overseeing it was this George Abbott, Bishop of London. These are all politicians and men of government. Nowhere to, so far, and y'all can borrow this book at your leisure, no way did we read about they fast and pray to ask the God of Abraham to give them understanding. I want a Bible for the England. I'm King James. I don't want nothing about the monarchy in it. And, and you, you guys, is, you guys are Hebraic. So should we use church? Should we use congregation? No one are they seeking the Father to write your Bible. But you want to brow beat me to death, and, and, and you, you ain't blessed because you ain't paid your tithes. And it don't matter about no Abraham no more. We all God's children by the faith. Faith don't change your identity. Uh, the last part just says that the stationer's company contributed to the project by paying each of the revisers 30 shillings a week. You're being paid 30 shillings a week. So what does that mean, family? You want your bread, you're going to do what I said. If I tell you to take that out, you're going to take that out. The worst part of this all, 
Last two slides. As languages never correspond word for word. See what? As languages never correspond word for word. What does the Bible say? Things uttered in Hebrew and other. I don't, you got it? I don't know. Oh, you can just keep paraphrasing yeah. it. Yeah, but things spoken in Hebrew and other languages don't have the same power. So that's why you don't, you don't understand the magnitude of Amana versus faith. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't understand Khan versus Amen. That's why you understand, you, don't, you think you're speaking Hebrew when you say uh, Allah. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the magnitude. Our language don't have the same force. Amana is very more powerful than I got faith. It's not a small difference. Come on, man. Law versus Torah. Torah means the mark of the fathers or the most high spirit. Law, law to us, we're all the... The I would talk at least. <laughs> Come on, you took me right out. Buddy. You knew I was going. You went to a lot to a black man. I'm already in with that. It was illegal for me to drink out the same fountain as you. It was illegal for me to live on this side of town. Now you come to church. I got to follow laws here. Man, listen. But when I say Torah, oh, this is the mark to save your life. Mm. It, it means more. I'm going to get out of trouble, man. Let's keep going. Translators have to make choices. Wait, who? Translators. Oh, God wrote this. The translators got to make these choices. Huh? In the case of the KJV, some of these choices were laid down in the guidelines, such as church rather than congregation, which is the example given in the rule. And everything is about church, 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 and it ain't even supposed to be in there. Where are they supposed to be in? And uh, I was looking at this because we brought it up, and I looked at the word, I think, Adah. So while I sp said that out loud, I'm counting on the riot to go ahead in a couple minutes, tell us more about that. But that's what I saw, I think, uh, first mention was Adah. Uh, Adah, ha. I think that's the phrase. You can double check, but I think it was like two weeks ago I thought about it. Um, so it says the decision to retain bishop instead of elder or senior reflects a decision to favor. Episcopacy. Greek, the Greek um, government of church. Archbishop, right. Bishop, Jerusalem, know nothing about that. We don't have no archbishops and bishops. We have the 70 elders that Moses chose. The Most High says, I'm going to put my spirit on 70 of the elders. They're going to be your council. Not, I hate to use the word because now you give me, um, what's the word again, Liz? Um, Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin. We got no Sanhedrin. That's Greek. We got 70 elders. If, if, if it's too big, if, if it's a small, small matter, take it to the elder, your local elders first. If your local elders can't come with it, go see the 70. If the 70 can't give an answer, now we got to go to Masha. And isn't it funny you set up your, your Supreme Court like that? Mm. But you don't mention the Israelites nowhere in your schools. Your government is set up after my nation, but you don't mention Israel nowhere in your schools. Uh, so, uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, all, all, all the, 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 the earth as we see it now and how it's structured and, and how seemingly decent or properly structured it is to make everything go to make commerce go to make you know everything function on a day-to-day -day basis does not exist if they don't have their hand on our scrolls particularly going into the law seeing how that's structured and then reverse engineering it for themselves and giving it to the rest of the earth of, of people and 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 saying that they came up with it when no, that's a lie because you had no sense of morality because the law was not given to you. You mm -hmm. had no sense. You had no sense of structure to this degree. I figured the nations all they did was trial and error, and then they just figured out, oh, okay, I can't do this, I can't do that, you know. But once they got their hands on our scrolls, then it was like, oh shoot, this is how you really do it. Oh shoot, uh, we living in times of King Solomon. And, and, and everything that he's saying is going out. Oh, that's how you're supposed to think. Thank you, Solomon. You know, so if it's not for us, 
then they would not know how to do anything. So again, that's a good point with the with the structure of the Supreme Court or or the law system that they have. All that comes from, you know, our father and how he runs things up there and how he passed it down to us and how they stole it from us. I yield. Well, the water will buy for that. It's, I, I try not to get passionate, but we're at the midnight hour and a lot of people, as we said it, there's going to be a lot more people killed and destroyed than are saved. And I want to make sure my hands are clean that I don't, I don't withhold this word from anybody who wants it. And that's what you got to keep in mind when you're going around family and friends and co-workers who are the most high's children, or even if they're righteous strangers, you have a task. You're responsible for these people. You're responsible for these people. So let's finish this up. Um, so it says that um, the decision to retain a bishop in instead of elder or senior, it reflects the decision to keep that system that he just mentioned about archbishop, et cetera, rather than pre as the model of church government. As disagreement about the form of government was a gaping fault line between the church hierarchy and the Puritan minority, this decision was critically important. Mm -hmm. The KJV was not intended to be a Puritan Bible. Why should any doctrine be injected? Why should any theology be injected? If you're translating something, just find the closest word and write that word. Don't slant the text to fit your the theology. That's what your King James Bible is. So even these King Jews and Hebrews and I got great breakdowns. Man, listen, all that none of that matters. None of that matters to me. You don't know what you're reading because you don't know the language or the culture. Let's keep going out. Other decisions are not covered by the guidelines, but nonetheless have theological implications. The question of whether the spirit should be capitalized, for example, rests with the translators. 1 Peter 3 and 18, translated in the Bishop's Bible, asserts that Christe, Christ, uh, Christ was killed as pertaining. pertaining to the flesh, but was quickened in the spirit. This translation was problematical because it seemed to endorse the radical heresy that denied the hypostatic union. Who remembers what the hypostatic union was? The, the father is the son, is the spirit, is the father, and et cetera. Christ was fully God, the most high, and he was fully man at the same time. So they said the text read like it's denying that hypostatic union. But first of all, hypostatic union is false anyway. But if the text is written like that, and it, if John wrote, that's Peter. Peter. If Peter wrote it like that, who are you to change what Peter wrote? When Peter walked with Christ, Peter walked on water. Who are you to change what he wrote? You are pagan with filth in your hands. And this is a text we're reading from people talking about their holy. I've been, I've been false since I was 12. Really? You can't be straight yet. You cross him to 12. How many times y'all been in church and heard this? Yeah. I've been calling on my life since I was 15. Really? At seven years old. Really? <laughs> Wow. Let's finish this up. I think this, I don't want to like prolong, prolong, but just a comment is that I, for me, feel like this is the first time I'm seeing an uh, example heavily of what you've been trying to describe, like physically seeing that example, taking, changing this, and then it says, instead, well, the hypostatic union, the union of the divine and human nature of Christ or in Christ and instead asserted the separateness of the human nature of Christ embodied in the flesh and the divine nature of Christ expressed in the spirit. All that gibber jazz, you don't understand our culture. Being divine, you pagans come across and, and y'all don't have these powers in your, your country. So when we raise the dead, you look at people like, it's God. No, Peter's telling you the great I am has did this. Bahasham Yahweh But you pagans got to label everything. So it's like, yeah, he was divine. And when you look and learn the culture, all of us are divine. All of us descend from him. These lights are divine. Those trees are divine. And you don't understand what you're reading. It's the for you. It's fubu. 
So now you give me a doctor. Oh, he could take that crucifix because he was God. No, he wasn't. He was the one to do it. Mm -hmm. it was the end. Don't make him less of a man. Don't make him less of my king. He was in this pressure. Father, it just cup the pet from me. Please. But not my will. Your will be done. Mm. You want to give me a text that he was led to the store without a moment of word. You whip a man with a cat and nine tail. He's going to cry out. Why do you want me to send a text? This man was stripped. His skin was coming off him. You don't want to talk about that. You don't want to be thinking of a nice little package. He, he was God. That's why he could take that. No, he wasn't. He was a man in his flesh with fear in his heart. With fear. But he had faith. My father says he's going to bring me through this. I'm going to eat this. Mm -hmm. And his oh. old boy's like, man, he gassed me up. I thought he was the one. And he appears like, Thomas, touch me, Thomas. I am the one. Let's finish this up. Wow. Yeah. It says, so the translators took evasive action by changing the final preposition from in to by and by capitalizing spirit. This is why I've been telling you all, you all are Bereans and have great conversation, have great insight, but everything in that Bible is slanted towards their theology. Capitalization, commas, punctuations. That's why I was begging y'all be patient. Everyone wants to go deep and die, but you're reading it from Greco-Roman people. Even putting something in the capital, you're trying to get my attention. You're trying to make me, this is important. But my nation don't got capitals. My nation, all we do is we scale those letters to what we're writing on. If I got a big stone, I can write bigger glyphs. But if I got a little parchment, I just make smaller glyphs. Even the ancient Greeks don't have upper and lower case. That stuff, it's just so weird. You see the levels that sometimes, I hate these people. You don't know what you're doing on your platform, whether you're a Hebrew or Israelite or you're a Christian, you don't know what you're telling people. And you're holy, I got the power, oh, Yahoo, what's on me? You don't even know what his name is. Let me get out your own bag. Let's finish this up. Uh, it says, capitalizing spirit deathly transforming the sentence from its endorsement of a heresy into an affirmation of the resurrection. In the KJV, Christ is described as being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. The, this solution is neat and is certainly countenanced by the Greek, but it may have seemed to some of the translators to have closed down other interpretations. Boises' this note records an alternative reading that did not make it into the margin. Christ was indeed put to death according to the flesh, but quickened according to the spirit. Well, wait a minute. I'm confused. I'm confused. How, how did God write this Bible, but you got an alternative verse that didn't make it in the final cut? Well, God don't know what he want to write? Um, United States. God make mistakes. Yeah. This is the level we're going through, fam. We're bringing this to a close. We want to finish this out. This book is here. You're more than welcome to borrow it. Um, all I need is your thumbprint and your social security number. But <laughs> this is the level we go through to break free from Christian dogma. This is a love mission, and I'm begging you all to verify everything before you be out there in social media arguing with people. And, and, and you have to let these people go. They think that Bible is the be all to end all and they can quote 15, 20 verses off the rip and they think that makes them holy. That thing, I, 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 I'm going live today. You don't know what you're reading. Even if you're a Hebrew Israelite, if you're not under the spirit of the most high by Shami Shai, you don't know what that text is saying. So family, in closing, this is why I've been telling you the King James Bible and all Bibles, no matter what, how much you pay for it, these are works of Satan. These are Frankensteins. Do we throw away the baby with the bathwater? No. We thank the Most High because it's our punishment that our scrolls have been taken from us. So we repent. Father, forgive me. Forgive our forefathers. Give me understanding to, to glean the truth from this text. But again, in closing, 
we don't need this level of scholarship to win the Christians. Even with the current conditions of the KJV Bible, we can show your, your lifestyle contradicts this Bible. But this is a love mission for you who want to know the truth. All these deep conversations we've been having over the years, this is what it takes. And you're going to be on an island. So welcome to island. Welcome to the island. Welcome to Patmos. You're going to see these people. You're going to hear these people say things. And like I've been doing, it's going to bite your tongue. They're going to ask you a question. They don't really want to know the answer. They want you to agree with them. Or they want to pick apart what you're about to say. So that's why I'm telling you, we're coming to a level, fast and pray, and you share it light when you have an opportunity and pray for the rest. With that, I yield over for questions, comments, and concerns.